So what's up, everyone? Welcome to DI Radio, the show where I interview some of the influential people in the Smash community. I'm Vance, and this is Charlie the King. How are you guys doing? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you doing? It's good to be on the show, dude. Uh, it's I'm good. I'm good. It's been a minute. People are I'm wearing like a long sleeve, even though it's like currently like 90 degrees out in the valley. <laughs> really, really weird to wear a long sleeve. Dude, this weather has been pissing me off, man. <laughs> it's uh, it gets really, really hot, and even at night, even at like the dead of night, it's still hot in my room because I have computer, three monitors, bunch of stuff here, and the window <laughs> barely cracks. So it's kind of hell. I have it's I, I can hell. see I can see you have the CRT in the background. That em- that emanates. Yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, the, the CRT emanates heat with the Wii. Look at you, man. Somebody, right. somebody went back to play P plus <laughs> or melee. One of the two. I got my Wii. I got my N64 because I, I speed run, I speed run Goldeneye. I suck. I suck though. I'm not. I'm not good. I'm not good at all. But I, it's fun. I, I really enjoy. What's it like to speed run that game? Honestly, you have to look. You have to look down and pick the best lines and deal with the N64 controller. That's how you speed run that game. <laughs> um, no expert. Not even close. I'm awful. Um, very new, but it's fun. <laughs> I mean, I liked. Like growing up, I grew up with some of the 007 games. Asia Under Fire was like one of my favorite ones. That was a really good one. The- I love that game. I love that game so much. Asia Under Fire. All the Bond games were super good on GameCube N64. Yeah, they were. My favorite thing about them was they weren't afraid to be the cheesy. Yes, exactly. Like, like exactly. 007 line stuff, and I was like, this is so corny, but it's so great to play. No, it's not even corny. No, it was just. It was just like no, it was cheesy. Absolutely, but that yeah, was the yeah. charm. It was very charming. <laughs> Yeah, very yeah. charming games the overly overly done british voice like you can just tell like, yeah just yeah tell some guy off the street like dude just read this in a british voice it'll be good <laughs> <laughs> but um so yeah it's been a minute since i last seen you what like something like five six months where we genesis genesis 7 was the last time we saw each other it's been a long time dude it's been a long time ever since the whole covid thing started man it's it is like i haven't seen my friends in like six months man like we, we talk all the time right but like seeing them like in person six six plus months it's it's honestly pretty hellish but you know we just got to deal with it until it's you know until it until it ends yeah I, get through it. I talked i recently we went on a hike maybe like about like a couple of like a month ago me and Chase, I I you post about it yeah dude, i was we were so happy about it we were just like dude this has been <laughs> like first of all a we're seeing each other for like what feels like forever B, we're obviously, you know, social distancing. We're very careful. I didn't, I don't think we went on a hike like two weeks after until the next time just to be safe. And then afterwards, it was just great to just go on a hike, like relax, take in nature, sweat the right. off, I guess, whatever. Yeah, of course. It was a good time. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I haven't, I talked to people, but seeing somebody, I haven't seen anybody like physically, physically in, in quite some time. And I kind of miss it um but oh i very much miss it dude it is it is driving me mad even though i'm an introvert myself this is too long this is too (laughs) much it's overboard dude like i remember when i was a kid i always thought when i was a kid like oh it'd be great to stay home all day you know i just play video games and but no 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 no. like i'm i'm now that i'm an adult i can't this is awful this is awful i'm sick of it (laughs) i'm i'm with you i'm very much this oh i'm actually i'm a little bit different i thought when i when i was a kid i was like playing video games is fun and then when I was little, I was like, I love Legend of Zelda that I wish I could go outside and live my own adventures in this cool magic world. T- turns out it's a t- terrible idea because bad bad stuff happens all the time. But yeah, I, I love going out. I As much as I like playing video games, it comes to a point where I'm like, I need to go out. I can't. Yeah, of course. No, you need I to like live your life, man. You need oh, yeah, to live yeah. your life. Definitely. But um, I know who you are. Oh, of course, we, we, we go we go way we, we go way back. back. Yeah, we go way way back. back. But, Old but, for those, but for those who don't know who you are, Charlie, give, give me the elevator pitch of who you are. All right, I'm Charlie the King. I'm a Smash player from SoCal. I've been playing for around six years, pretty much pretty much six years now. I've been in the you know in the competitive know how of Smash in the scene. I uh uh you started going to tournaments back in 2014. Uh. People knew me in the community before I was even good because I was very loud. Um, after a while, I got pretty good at the game just through practice, repetition. Mm-hmm. Now I'm currently the best in, in SoCal, uh, arguably on the PR I am, but Void lives here too. He's not on it, but, you know, he probably, <laughs> you know, it's, <laughs> you it's, it's, it's try, debatable. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's a, he's, he's really fucking good. <laughs> you're good, you're good, dude. He's it, really it, good. I'm you, we, we said it in the pre-show, right? Right, right. Like, it's like, he's really it's good. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, that's that's who I am. Play Wolf, one of the best Wolf players. Uh, very, uh, I'm a Wolf specialist almost. Nobody really does the combos that I do with him. So yeah, that's what I that's what I got for you. That's who I am. So I had Izzah on the show. Uh, time of this recording, I've been recording like several people. Um, 
uh, honestly, it's kind of like taking me by storm because I expected a lot of no's going into this. Like people just telling me no, but everybody said yes. And then I just, I sat on a brick and I was like, great. Now I have to figure out how to schedule everything and get onto this as soon as possible, right this wave. But I, sp I spoke to Iza about you and I was telling him like, that's probably one of the most interesting things I've always appreciated about Charlie. Even going back to Smash 4, I used to tell people the difference between Charlie and Eon and Larry is there is that fine line of like it's it's like you guys are the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit for some weird reason. <laughs> like one of them is neutral, one of them is tech skill, and the other one is neutral and tech skill. And, right. and punish game. And I felt like the one thing that you were always so unique is that you not only were a big lab monster, but you would find the smallest little combo, like just the smallest thing, and you'd be like, yeah, that's me right there. You don't know. I'd actually, I'd actually do it in tournament too. Like it's not just a lot of people, a lot of lab monsters, they do stuff that they almost never utilize um, to their fullest in actual matches. I do them all the time. Like literally every match I do something I've labbed. Every single match is like a forward air back air flash or shine back air or something like that. Literally every match, every other match is a very consistent thing for me. Yeah, and I think that's the one thing that I've always told people. Like the, the And it's not because we're friends and it's not because – it's just so interesting to watch you on – first of all, it's interesting to watch you in person. <laughs> knowing, you, knowing you as a person, it's interesting to be around you. But it's also interesting to watch you stream because you go over this combo for like four hours. And then I'll see you pulling on someone in tournament. And then I'll be like, yeah, he couldn't DI that. And you're like, that's undiable? It's like, no, it's not that he couldn't DI it at all. It's just he did not know that combo existed. He did not know that combo <laughs> could hit. And there is no way he could react to the that and DI that yeah. properly. I don't and know he does like react to the DI most of the time. Most yeah. of the time. You know, there's always situations where they can DI and get out, of, like, get out of certain stuff. In certain positions, they can DI to avoid dying. You know, of course, it's always the case. But you also have to be familiar with what I'm doing to do that, as you said. Yes. Yeah. So I just tell people, like, if you want to enjoy a stream where you'll laugh, you'll learn you'll have a good time uh definitely watch charlie on twitch but i appreciate that man thank you yeah yeah and, and it just goes to like me enjoying you i think i've like we like we said you know we go way back uh the good old fire and dice days but i think your history as a whole and that's what i kind of what i brought you here to talk about your history as a whole goes way farther to like being on tv and seeing you mm. and not even knowing that was you until you told me right. that, that was me and i was like that that's weird, but I'm glad you told me this because now I know that I relate to you in a funnier <laughs> way. Uh, um, you were a child actor. You were in a few commercials. Yes, I was. Uh, so was uh, the story with that is that uh, it started like when I was like nine or ten. Like we uh, originally we were at the mall, right? And then this talent agent saw my sister and thought that she'd look really good on TV. So they gave us this card to some network. I don't remember. I don't even remember what they were called at the time. Right. Um, I, I don't remember now either. Uh, so we went to them and we took some acting classes there, but nothing really came of it. And then a year later, we, uh, we took acting classes at a place called ESI Network, ESI. Um, and so both me and my sister did it, but I'm the one who ended up, you know, getting an actual acting agent, auditioning for an agent and getting one. And then after you get your agent, uh, you just, you're, you're an actor now. Like you're I mean, you're an actor beforehand, but th that's when you start like actually getting auditions. Right. And I remember... ESI network in acting class, they told us, you know, you might go to 50 auditions and get the call back to four of them and get the part for none of them. Because the way it works is you go to an audition and if they like you, they'll call you back for another one. That's that. So they pick from a smaller, like they narrow the, the competition basically right. um, the second time around. And if they like you, then, then you get the part. So I had around a hundred auditions and I got the call back for all of them. And I got the part. Yeah. I got the call back for all of them and I got the part for four of them. And what I realized about commercial acting, especially when you're a kid, is mm -hmm. they don't really care if you're actually good at acting. Because I'm like, I don't know, I, I, I'm not very confident in my acting skills, even after, you know, getting a call back to every audition I've been to and after actually right, right, getting right, right, right. speaking lines and, you know, in, in commercials and stuff. It's mainly just a confidence thing. Um, you just have to, you have to be loud. <laughs> you have to be, uh, really make your presence known and really be just confident. Like you don't even have to be that yeah. act good at acting just to be confident in front of them and present yourself well. Also, I kind of got carried by the fact that I used to have a huge afro, like a, just a big curly, like, you know how Akito's hair is? It's yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like it was exactly like that. A little bit smaller. I think I have a picture of that on my old Facebook. Actually, before I get to everybody, people who don't know Akito, uh, he's a really good friend of ours. Uh, follow, follow. Actually, follow him on YouTube. He does really good covers. Aikido Bass, uh, Aikido five 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 on tw on tw Twitch. No, Twitter, Twitter. 
Uh, really cool guy. If you if you're here from SoCal, it's a big dude with a fro. You might have seen huge him in a couple fro. Yeah, huge fro. Yeah. Japanese, and you'll see him at a couple tournaments, especially if you're into the anime fighters. Basically, yeah. So I, I had the fro right, and I think that carried me because nobody nobody else in my age group had hair like that. Glasses, hair, the combination, and the confidence, like the 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 way I like presented myself. I was very goofy. I was very silly. Um, yeah. And a lot of the kids were all like locked up and you know they were like standing there it's kind of like yeah you know how there's some yearbook pictures of kids in elementary school some of them are like actually smiling and then some of them are just like <laughs> yeah. that was like me. this that was me that yeah was some of them are because they're so nervous about making their parents happy with their picture that they just go like because they just want to show their teeth and that, that was a lot of kids that that auditioned uh with me but everyone the callbacks were always difficult because everyone was like like was on it and uh for me and my mom because my mom took me to all the auditions um she wasn't very like um like in the know when it came to all that stuff you know she you know my, my parents come from lebanon so already there's like a little bit of a barrier there like they're not super in tune with the culture here my dad is but my mom not so much so a lot of it just rested on me and i remember all these other kids like their parents like like hella like were hella invested in all of that stuff and my mom really just all she did was get the emails to take, take me to auditions and back everything else was on me like just learning the lines and all of that stuff was on me like coming up with how i was gonna actually deliver them and it worked out. It really did. I feel like all I really, you know, just the afro and the confidence. That's all you need. That's all you need in life. An afro and confidence. <laughs> an afro and confidence. Yeah, I wish, I wish things were that easy on my end, but. <laughs> but I think yeah, I ended up. That's probably the probably the most. And I'm sorry, I cut you off. But like, I think it's that's cool, probably cool. the most enjoyable thing. Like, I tell people, I met Charlie when Charlie was like, thirteen. I was fourteen. Oh, I 14, Yeah, fourteen. He was loud. And he was like the kid. Either you could hear him in the room, and he had so much energy that I like. I me, I think I was. So I'm 26 now, so I think minus a few years ago, I was probably like at least 18 to 20, somewhere around there. And I just remember, I wish I had that energy when I was 14. When I was 14, I was too busy trying to look cool. I was, right, too, right. I was too busy trying to like idolize myself. Like, hey, you see Sasuke? I want to be like that, the quiet guy. Yeah, right. In the room. <laughs> no, I was totally I was, not. I was always. Um... I was really, yeah, I was, I was pretty loud. I was pretty annoying too, obviously. Uh, but you know, I was a kid, right? Like I, I was just a totally different person now, but you know, it's, it's, there's good and bad parts. You know, I, I was really goofy. I was really like silly. I was nice to everybody, but I was also really annoying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's just, just how it is. And I think that's kind of like what, what made you so fun to be around with. I think one of my favorite, one of my favorite moments, and I'm, I'm probably not going to say the words here because it's, it's a lot, but, like, one of my favorite moments with you was, like, years ago back at Smash 4, we went to a tournament called Indigo Plateau, and I think oh my we, we all dude. had dinner afterwards. Which was ages like, ago, yeah. It was right, it's right next to my place, too. Literally, Indigo Plateau was the only time there was a tournament, like, 10 minutes from me. Because, uh, fad, yeah, they did it in, like, like Pasadena area. We went to a cheesecake. We went to the cheesecake, cheesecake next fad. to my house. Mm -hmm. And I remember... Yeah. Um, tournament was over i think you got ninth you got i don't know you got, I got, no i didn't do that well. i got like 13th or okay, something. something i don't remember yeah i remember you didn't get top eight but i remember we were like we were like oh shoot charlie did pretty well and i think that's when the conversation started slowly happening of like oh shoot charlie is uh he's he's, he's getting somewhere but, yeah um i remember after the tournament you had this old recording of yourself oh my <laughs> goodness i dude that was that was my voicemail until like last month yeah it was like you in sixth grade and i just recently changed it and larry walks up to you and he's like why do you sound like mickey mouse <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I sounded dude i i was a kid man i was a kid i sounded way different and even yeah. then at, like compared to like when I showed you that recording to now, I sounded I sound a lot different now oh, than yeah, then because I was like 15 or something. And then, and then you start you start cursing so loud. Like when you were in a church. Sorry, I probably. Got well, we were in a church. Yeah, that's we were, even was, better. Yeah, you, you were cursing. <laughs> that's so even loud. better. And we were in a church, and then someone goes, "Hey, this is the house of the Lord." And then you just run away, and then we all. Oh, did I run away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, even remember. Just, I think who was it? LBA? Yeah, it was LBA who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was him who showed them. And then we all we, we all go to a cheesecake factory, and then we have we have a good time <laughs> just talking about random nothing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was that was interesting. Like just watching you grow up. So you did a lot of commercials. I think the commercial that you that you told me you did, which surprised me, was you were in a Lunchables commercial. I think right. No, no, no. Uh, I was in a Dairy Queen one. I was Dairy Queen, T-Mobile, Cattell University, and some stock site like Forex. I was in a FedEx commercial. Um, the T-Mobile one was, was the one that was commercial. popular. That was the one that I remember seeing on the TV a lot. The T-Mobile one was huge. Uh, it, it aired when I was in sixth grade. I remember uh, 
I used to like, I used to, you know, nobody, I used to be like the nerd in sixth grade, right? I had Afro glasses, messed up teeth before I like got my braces and everything. So like everyone picked on me, obviously. I didn't really like, it didn't really bug me that much, but I was always like the, 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 the easy, the easy target. And then my commercial, that T-Mobile commercial, I was in Eris during a Lakers game. And then I come to school the next day. I, I didn't watch the game because I like, I was like probably playing Need for Speed Undercover on my Wii. Terrible game, by the way. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I didn't watch the game, I, but I came to school the next day, and I was a celebrity, dude. Like, everyone was talking about me. Everyone was coming up to me. And, like, everyone who was giving me, like, who was, who was giving me shit was, like, uh, they, they totally changed their tune, like, completely. Didn't It didn't last, but people stopped messing with me. But, I like, it's crazy how quick they, like, they flipped. And they, I also, like, I that felt so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It felt so good. And that's, I think that's pretty cool. I think the only thing I've ever seen, like, <laughs> it's never happened to me, but I just did, I think... Let's see, in senior year of my high school, Instagram just became popular. So I remember somebody got in, Insta famous, and then she was, and then everybody had that same turnaround with her. But still, I, have you ever? Were you ever? I mean, if, if you can tell me, I don't know if what well, you can tell me or not. But like, have you ever been approached for a TV show? Uh, I've movie? I've auditioned for I've auditioned for TVs and TV and movies. Um, I haven't gotten any of them. Uh, I got callbacks on most of them. The the problem is that commercial acting and television and film acting is very different, and you have mm -hmm. to like you have to train differently for both. Commercial acting is a lot easier. It's a lot easier to get into. It's a lot easier to get jobs for. It's a lot easier right, to right. honestly, you could make a really good living off commercial acting, just going commercial to commercial to commercial. Um, but obviously, you're not going to be famous. You're not going to be like a like a super well known actor. You're just going to be respected in the industry, but outside of it, you're not going to be super famous or um, and even within the industry, you're not going to be super well known. Um, Unless you're flow from from uh, what's what's it? yeah flow from the commercial I think it's yeah, progressive yeah, yeah it's, like, it's like that um, but even people like you know there's there's more low key people who have been in a ton of commercials that you don't even notice like and then they make their living off that or you could do background work and whatever but when it comes to TV and movie acting it's a huge commitment you basically have to so I wasn't even like acting like full time like I went to commer I went to auditions like two times three times a week sometimes one times one time a week um, but I wasn't like training all the time I wasn't like taking it super seriously like all all that happened was i get emailed a script i'd read it on the way to the audition and then do it then go home and go back to my life but when it came to uh tv and movie you had to like go to acting school like four three four days a week sometimes okay. five days a week um you have to like get an acting coach and see them every week yeah it, like it's it's a it's a huge grind and the network doesn't want like they want you to take it super seriously or else they'll 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 drop you basically yeah. and that's basically what happened to me they they uh in 2016 after i got the dairy queen commercial um and that was the last commercial i've ever been I, that was my first audition back in a year and i got the part and that was the last commercial and last audition i've ever done um because after that they wanted me to do tv and movies and i I didn't want to. I kind of just wanted to. Uh, I kind of wanted to stay in commercial, but both my mom was pushing me to do TV and movie, and they were they really wanted me to do TV and movie. And we had this meeting with a bunch of other people my age, and they I realized that they took acting a lot more seriously than I did. They gave us these surveys, like or these papers to fill, like what have I done in the past year to to advance my acting career? And I'm like, nothing basically, like outside of that one audition. And then they asked, how many networking events have I been to? Zero. Like I didn't really take. I enjoyed it and I was good at it, but I didn't want it to be the main focus of my life. And what ended up happening was I just didn't pursue commercial and, and uh, or, uh, I didn't pursue movie and TV acting further. And ever since then, I haven't gotten any commercial auditions, right. um, probably because the network just was like, okay, he doesn't take it seriously. So they didn't want to keep me. Um, I got him though, oddly in 2018, I got an audition for a, like uh, an Arabic speaking role. Cause they wanted a, a, an Arabic speaking person my age and i just denied it i was like i'm not gonna i didn't want to do it anymore you know it's, it's actually funny too because when i first met you i never would have thought you spoke arabic and then i think maybe like two three years maybe a year or two two years back coincidentally now that you're saying it when i met valadin two years ago the two of you were talking and then i met valadin and he's like oh yeah me and charlie can speak the same language and i was like wait what are, what are you guys speaking and then you guys had to tell me like oh okay now i get it <laughs> So I felt, right. like, I felt like you could have done it. I think you've always been somebody who, if very much the antithesis of whatever he sets his mind to, he can accomplish it. I think, you know, I think you've very much become that. And you telling me, like, you know, hey, I was in commercials. I think the T-Mobile one's the one I saw the most. Um, that was when you were a Boy Scout, I think. I can't remember. Yeah, that was the, that was the Dairy Queen Dairy one, Queen, yeah. yeah, yeah. Most 
to you in those two commercials, and I was like, wow, I remember seeing those commercials very well. Like, I, I because I used to watch TV while I played my Game Boy Advance, like, so much back in the day. <laughs> or I think it was probably, at the time, maybe it might have been my DS or my 3DS. I don't know. Yeah, probably your DS. <laughs> um, but, like, I just tell everyone, like, yeah, he, Charlie's been somebody who puts his mind into something but it's funny because we never we never knew that charlie well i didn't know that charlie maybe a lot of us at firing dice didn't know that charlie and because we knew the charlie that like oh here's the scrub coming up on these like these these facebook messages calling oh i was such a, i was such a gym dude <laughs> i used to be such a stupid little every 14 year old that like that gets in the competitive smash scene almost thinks they're super good mm -hmm. most of them a lot of them think they're super good like because they're kids you know they don't really and then they, 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 you know, I, I, what I did was I went on Facebook and I was like, oh, I'm so good. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to beat all of you. I'm going to, it was just really, just, you know, typical gym behavior. I guess the thing, what, what separated me most was, uh, I actually went to tournaments. Yeah. I actually went, not even that I did, I actually, I actually went out to tournaments. A lot of people who, you know, just post on the SoCal page, um, you know, just are hella opinionated, want to argue about like the game, but they don't even, they don't attend events, um, which is fine. I mean, they can, I'm not saying they should, they can't argue. They have the right to say whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. It's just that, uh. You know, I actually went to tournaments a after getting flamed by the entire by the entire SoCal page, rightfully so. I actually got up and went to a tournament, um, and I feel like a lot of that, you know, a lot of getting flamed for being a gym built character. A lot of people, uh, like it, it definitely, like I learned how to not embarrass myself online. <laughs> I, I grew up in a sense, like in in that way, definitely. I think that was the funniest. I think when it got to the height of it was like. In that comment, and I tell people this, this is, this is a very little known fun fact. You're going to talk about the champ thing? Yeah, champ. <laughs> and I was, like, I was like, I only knew who champ was because at the time he had just gotten PR'd for Smash 4. I think he was right. like rank 15. He was number 14 or something. 14, yeah, 14 to 15. Yeah, he was 14 to 15. He and I played Fox. I was like, I was jealous. I thought it was just me and Larry, even though like Larry was all the way up here. And I was like, literally like like in the <laughs> depths the of the 1-2 in the one two 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 category i never went oh two surprisingly i was trash i'm like it doesn't matter like i'm not saying i never went oh two like it's an accomplishment i was garbage regardless like sometimes the different there's no sometimes there isn't a difference between one two and oh two it's the same thing like it's actually one two oh two two it's the same thing it's actually all the same <laughs> yeah if, if, you're not, if you're not doing three two then you're below average yeah. no, no no real obviously like uh don't for any for any new new players watching this, don't gauge yourself by how well you do in tournament. A lot of your improvement is gonna come from what you see. Like one oh two one two. Basically, what I'm saying is oh two one two 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 three two. Like they're in the long run for your improvement, they can be good for like it's good to go like okay, I went one two this time instead of oh two. That's that's fine for a short term accomplishment. But in the long term, oh two one two two. Like you're gonna realize in the long term that uh, what's more important than your result is your gameplay you're going to start noticing shifts in your gameplay because a lot of the time results will tell don't tell the accurate tale of how well you're doing and that's what it yeah is. i didn't want to didn't want to discourage you guys no, no, no. i think that's what i kind of want to talk about too like your gameplay like slowly you starting to improve i think like i said earlier i need to go flat tell you got 13th and then people yeah I think Mewtwo, Rich Brown had just started meeting Mewtwo. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so I remember people were just like, wow, Charlie got 13th. And then... A lot of... I remember the main tournament, the first time I ever heard, like, someone actually, like, recognize that I did better than usual was that some fire and dice back in 2015. Just some random fire and dice. Like, I don't even remember... Like, I don't remember what, when it was, like, what month it was. What, like, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was on... I remember on commentary, I was rewatching my VODs. And then I watched Grands. I think it was Larry, Larry, and someone in Grands. I, I don't remember. And then afterwards, uh, the commentators were talking. They were like, "Okay, so what, what were the results today?" They were like, uh, "They said, okay, Larry. I think it was Con Con. Larry Con Con. K nine Zen. They're like Larry Con Con K nine. Who got fifth? And they're like, oh, they're like, uh, uh, so it was Larry Con Con K nine uh, Zen. You. And then it was me. Someone, uh, someone got fifth. I forgot who else it was. I think it was me, me and someone else. And they were like. Charlie got fifth. They, they they were surprised, um, and that felt really good for me at the time. Uh, of course, that that's like minuscule, um, like in the long run of like like of my improvement because it's not about all it's not all about results. I remember the first big improvement I made was after Evo 2015. I uh, drowned in pools that tournament, um, and then I started playing friendlies uh, with legit the Diddy from NorCal, mm -hmm. and I like felt myself. I started I started noticing things that I hadn't noticed before about the game and i remember that was the first big aha moment i had with smash and then i had multiple ones of course throughout my uh 
career of playing i remember i got ranked in and at the end of 2015 after starting in like late 2014 so like that's relatively a short period of like because i started really really awful and i was bad 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 and then like a couple months like a few months later i got like ranked in socal which is like a strong region at the time and even then i was pretty bad no i was bad i was bad when i was ranked 20th i think my neutral was awful but uh i was good at other facets of the game but the most important part i wasn't that good at it and a lot of people will say, well, how did you get ranked with a bad neutral? It's because when you have a bad neutral, you but you're like good at other things, you'll beat you'll beat people, you'll beat pretty decent people, but what happens is you will hit a wall and you will not get past it unless you actually learn like your fun unless you improve your actual fundamentals. Like no matter how carried you are, you will always hit a wall. Like if people think you're carried and they're losing to you, that's their problem. Like they need to figure out why they're losing to someone who's bad <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean because i was i was not good at the time like i i just did like auto cancel people fell for like auto cancel dare on the platform into me mashing a button and they drop shield and uh i dared into people's shield all the time and they just drop shield and i up smash them for it and all that stuff <laughs> so it was just like a lack of it was people I don't know. It was it was people dropping shield to dare up smash. That's why I got ranked. I got ranked as people drop shield to dare up smash, <laughs> and that's why. You're that's the reason. Tell, like this is the tech idea that made that's me. The, no, I, I specifically remember a lot of my ranked wins were me jump, double jump, dare. They drop shield and then I up smash them. After like me getting a bunch of fraudulent damage off of mashing, like in a, in a stupid spot, like rolling up tilt and it's like eighty damage. Rolling mash up tilt sixty damage. Stupid. <laughs> But then that's kind of what I'm going to talk about, like the building blocks of you becoming a better player and getting into Smash, right? Like you said, you came in late 2014. I actually remember like hearing about you, seeing you at tournaments. I, I think the one thing that I told people that, what tournament was it? It might have been the first breakthrough, the one where AC won, where it was Eon, and I think at the time, I don't remember if you were ranked. I, I was ranked at the time. Yeah, I was I mean, like already ranked for, for a year or two, probably Eon a year, seven. I don't remember. Ian got second, and everybody was asking me, where was Eon from? And Eon got third. Eon got third. It was Eon... Ace. It was AC Pitbull Eon. You're, yeah, Pitbull. Yeah, yeah, Poor yeah. Pitbull. Yeah. We always had that small thing where we just Pitbull like... Boss, dude. <laughs> Pitbull's always been good. Like, he's always been good. He's always been that guy that never got ranked but was super good. Exactly. Remember when... Like, he's he's one of those guys that shows up and makes a massive upset. And people are like, who is that? I'm like, oh, we, we're not surprised. Like, that one time he 2 0 Hyuga when Hyuga, like, beat, Ni like, the, like the, the week after Hyuga beat Nairo or something. Like, <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> and, and, like, that's what I wanted to talk about, too. Like, I remember seeing, and, um, first of all, it was so hard to find all this stuff until, like, people started posting. I think it was Saturn, Saturn or Spec, who started posting the high school Smash results on the page. <laughs> and then consistently, if, I think consistently it was you. Eon. Well, back then it was Eon Wave, and then so even before, even like Eon, Eon like showed up to like the third or second high school smash because originally it was me and Mojo. Like I, I played Mojo at the first high school smash I went to. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know who Mojo is, he he plays melee now, but he was like a high level brawl player when he was like thirteen. He got I think twenty. He got like top thirty two at Evo twenty something in brawl with Snake. He ended up losing to Larry I think and someone else. Uh, but he did really well that tournament, and now he plays Melee. He also played Smash 4. He dominated High School Smash in Smash 4. He was pretty good at Smash 4, but he never really took it seriously. Um, but people were hella surprised when I beat him, because um, he was like, because he has history with Brawl, right? And he's he's still super good at Smash, but he, like, does, of course, he's like, he doesn't take, he doesn't, like, he's not like me where where I, like, wanted to do Smash. Like, like from the very beginning, from the very beginning when I started playing Smash, I wanted Smash to be, like, what I like what I do in life. You know, I want to, like, you know, compete. I want to stream. I want to do all that. He just, you know, plays He's one of the guys that he's in college or something. He works a job. He plays, you know, and he's super good. But tell me more. That's that's what I kind of want to know, Ray. Like, where did you, between twenty like 2015 and going on, right? Because I remember I saw you, might have been Genesis 3. I can't remember when. There was a tournament where I think you didn't necessarily reach a ceiling, but you were known of, like, Charlie is pretty good, but there is a problem where he's on stream. And I remember you were, like, freaking out. And it was like an issue for you. And then that was a wall. You hit like this wall. Then you broke that wall. And then you started becoming like even better. And then I was like, this is something for Charlie. And now I, t I remember telling people like, in, I mean, he's getting, we're all getting old here. But like, I told everybody when Larry gets old, when he's retired or whatever, like Charlie and Eon will collectively fit those spots that, that Larry, Nico, one of those other players. Fit. Where, where did you decide that I want to really put my practice into tech really face the pressure of the stream and become this person that you are today i mean now when people think about wolf 
who are, what's the name they bring up? Charlie. Why? Because Charlie has the combo. So that's what you're you're on the right track here. I want to know where did you where did you figure this out? Where did you want to say I want Smash to be part of my life? I want to be a part of it. I'm willing to put in what is essentially what I've seen the nine to five, right? So when Smash when Smash Four first came out, literally the the day I got it um, in October when it came out on 3DS in the US, um, held it in my hands and I looked at it. I was a stupid kid. I was in GameStop with my dad, and I said, "Dad, I'm gonna be the best at this game." <laughs> um, that was it, really. Like, I, I, from the minute that the game came out, like, I, I, I got into the. Before that, I knew about the competitive scene because I watched, right. I watched a lot of brawl videos in my robotics class when I was like 12 in, in like middle your school. Dad, your dad sounds like the antithesis of that meme. Are oh, you winning, son? And he just walks in and it's just you playing the game. <laughs> but go on go on you were you were watching brawl videos right so i already knew the brawl like the competitive scene existed so i i, knew, I was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna this is gonna be i'm gonna get into it i'm gonna go to tournaments and i'm gonna get super good at this game so i, I play the game literally like i have so many hours on my 3ds alone i play the game every day online um i was awful of course but that's how you build your foundation when you're first at the very first starting off you know you're not super into the competitive scene so you just go online and you build your foundation so i built my foundation um the wii u came out I started going to tournaments for that. Um, it wasn't doing well, but I didn't let it phase me. I just kept going back. I think what kept me going back is me thinking at the time that I was good and I was just getting, like, you know, I was just losing. But I was, you know, I'm good enough so I can, this is going to be the one. Um, I was bad, but me going oh, back to tournaments over and over again to get better is, is I'm really glad I did that because I ended up, because I, I remember, you know, I felt like I could do it even when I was awful. I, you know, I'd watched VODs and I was clueless about what was happening, but I, I just wanted to learn. Like, I, eventually I accepted that, okay, I'm not that great at this game, but I was still a kid, so I was cocky, even though I was bad. Um, I want to get to the, I want to skip to, like, when I was, when I got ranked, because we already explained how I was, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Right. So when I, when I first got ranked, and I started, like, you know, doing okay, like, Genesis 3, we, we talked, we talked about Genesis 3, right? And Paragon, Paragon was actually my first ever big breakout break it wasn't i didn't do super well. like i got 25th but it was like a big deal because i wasn't i wasn't ranked that was before that was the season i got ranked i got 25th at paragon um i got top 32 at like a major basically um unranked i beat uh uh who did i beat at that tournament i beat true blue i think who was ranked in florida so he, uh, you know that, that was a, kind of a big deal for me like at the time like at the time that was a deal uh like a, a thing and i i ended up losing any ranked player when you're unranked is always good Right, and then I, I ended up, uh, I lost to Shaky, I lost to Shaky and DeBuzz at that tournament. Wow. Um, and I got, I remember I, I almost beat DeBuzz one of the games because I, I, uh, I was at like 160, and he was at 12. <laughs> and I threw him off the stage, and I did the most YOLO runoff uh, forward air fair footstool. <laughs> the most, usually, because that, that, that was really, really situational in that game. Like, you had to set up into it or actually have a gimp. Mm -hmm. But I just, you know, ran, you ever fight a four glory Mario or like a quick play Mario, and they do the, like the most random runoff, uh, oh, yeah. random runoff forward. Like, it's the most totally like there's no reason for it they didn't look at, they, they, they're not paying attention to how you're positioned at all they just told they just do it but you just happen to get hit by that's basically what happened but i got uh, utterly destroyed like i got uh, like besides that i got utterly like destroyed out neutral outplayed in every facet of smash um but it was cool that i got to that in the that i got to play him in the first place uh that i got that far in bracket um so it was really, but yeah, I ended up, I got, I also played Johnny Westside that tournament. I had to play a lot of SoCal. I kind of sucked that, that, that we had to play each other at like a major, but uh, or it was like decently sized. It was like a, it was like, I'd say more of a regional, but right. there was like, no, there was Nairo. There was like a bunch of good people. It was like a bunch of Zero and MVD. Um, no, that tournament was pretty big. That tournament was, was pretty I, big, I, I guess. It was, it was big because, just to add to that, like it was big because at the time, Yes, we had Evo, which was in Vegas, but SoCal wasn't very much known for its majors. This was pre yeah. pre ESA, pre two GG becoming out coming out. There. Oh, definitely way before SoCal way used to be. I, I specifically remember having a conversation with Bam and Larry at that tournament about about how SoCal was very under. Uh, it was very unseen we were still hidden at the time even though we were one of the like at the time we were one of the strongest regions but we were hella hidden like in the, our, our our locals our locals we had like mr r zero larry at one tournament at one point yeah. and ranked i remember the top 15 and like international talent 
Right, but and and uh, but our but we'd have like fifty viewers in the stream or less. Like like nobody would watch. Like nobody watched the vods or the the stream, even though that was our premier stream. Fad was our like our number one streamer in SoCal at the time, and nobody like at, at like barely anyone would watch the stream of top ten players. Like like four top ten players in one tournament. Like and nobody yeah. really paid attention to it. And this is top ten players. I remember at the time, this is top ten players in the world. Yes, like, in the yeah, whole world, yeah. Like, they were all living here. I remember like, yeah. that was the crazy Or just part. showing up or visiting, yeah. Exactly, and I just remember, like, I used to tell people, dude, to get to get to top 20 in SoCal, half of that top 20 is already top 10 in the world. Yeah, it, it was dumb. Or, uh, was not, like, like, four of them, three of them. That was back when Larry was, like, a beast. He's still a beast. He'll get there. Um, But he was, like, consistently placing. Mm-hmm. Um, But, yeah, so Paragon, you know, I... I uh, Paragon, I, I beat uh, True Blue, J West. I played J West, who was ranked and who... Uh, in SoCal, uh, and so that was like also like a, a thing for me. Like, I already I already racked up a ton of ranked wins, and that's something I remember. I remember I got like 10, 11 ranked wins. Like, I got a lot of rank, and still didn't get ranked like one of the seasons. And I'm not like mad about. It. I don't care. Um, at the time, of course, I was because I was stupid. But it was just a lot of competition at the time. You know, it's not like something I'm at all mad about, at all pissed about. Don't don't even, not not tripping over that at all. But that's just goes to show how hard it was like at first because that was like one of my biggest goals. Oh, I want to get ranked. Um, of course now I realize how like like that doesn't really. Like setting that goal, I think hindered me for the most part because I focus too much on the results instead of my gameplay. Like I focus too much on yeah, wins and losses that, over yeah, my actual me. gameplay. Like I wasn't paying attention enough to that. Um, but yeah, so I ended up I ended up winning, beating J West. I beat Scizor to J West Scizor, and then uh, the Buzz and the Buzz uh, beat my ass. Um, and at that tournament, I had a panic attack on stream uh, because of the pressure. And that would become a problem because that happened over and over and over again for the next year and a half. It happened at locals. It happened at uh, it happened at uh, Genesis three. Though so Genesis three was really low key. I was I was because at the time, like I ended up. Oh, after a while, because I've had I've had an unbelievable number of panic attacks in my life. Um, a lot of them at tournaments. Mm. So I am I have just become a beast at tanking them. I especially nowadays like. Uh, like recently, even because I like if 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 I have a panic attack at home, which I do all the time, um, I can't let my parents know because they make it worse. Yeah. <laughs> they especially my mom, she freaks out. She makes everything worse. Uh, so I have to like just tank it. I kind of just like like I just take it because there's always I I I I'm just so I've had so many that I'm just like experienced in in just uh. I'm like, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, don't worry, I'm fine, I'm fine. And there's always a peak of, like, one or two seconds where like, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. But those peaks get smaller for me the more I experience them. There will always be a peak in an anxiety attack where you feel like you're gonna die, like, no matter, like, where all rational thought is out of, is out of your head. So I, those I peaks, agree, I've, I've been there. I've been those there. peaks used to last minutes for me. Um, I, I had one at Paragon multiple times. When I, when I went to Paragon, uh... I, I, it happened on stream and then it happened at night after when we were done competing it just it just hit me again and that one lasted forever i remember luck seven um uh link night uh and and, and i think leo was there too uh i think they they they, they took me to their, to their hotel room and until i until i calmed down um that was really nice of them the two they're, they're my like some of my best friends i haven't talked to, to hector and sean in the or uh, link night and and uh and luck seven in a while but you know that helped oh, um but yeah like, after a while leo, I, I, sorry charlie because everyone's gonna think it's mk leo no it's leo oh yeah just one of our, one of our of me, audience so, yeah. Yeah. right yeah um so yeah it was that 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 i have to i had to deal with that i still somewhat i i got past it you know around 2016 2017 really is they just stopped happening like the anxiety attacks during tournaments stop happening mm-hmm. um thankfully but sometimes they make a guest appearance when i'm at a major like uh but I'm, I've gotten really good at dealing with them. Like at Frostbite, this past Frostbite, mm-hmm. I'm playing my set with Scat game four in loser's bracket for top 32. And I'm like, oh no, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Here we go again. My uh, my arms are numb. My jaw is, is loose and, and, and also numb. But I just breathed and kept playing. Uh, I played through all my anxiety, most of my anxiety attacks with varying results most of the time the annoying part is your hands get your arms and hands get really numb and as long as you don't like there was one time where my hands totally locked up like i couldn't move that was i obviously couldn't play through that like i was i was just i had to dq i couldn't do anything but um 
you know, the better I got at dealing with them, the more I was able to fight back against them. You know, they, they happen. I'm like, okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And by the time game when game four ended, I was like, okay, like not even when game four, like in the middle of game four, it like went away. I like, I, I pushed it back, but it's, it's been an issue I've had to deal with just anxiety. And I feel like there's really no way to permanently get rid of it. It's just something I just have to learn how to learn how to really uh, deal with. And I feel like if I'm confident enough, if I'm prepared, if I'm prepared enough, I have nothing to, I'll have nothing to worry about in the first place. So I won't get like, if I'm super confident in a matchup, if I'm really experienced, no matter how nervous I get, I will, my training, like in the, in the game will speak for itself. Will overcome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Will overcome the, uh, and I the totally feel you that because I, I tell people, I mean, it's never really, I, try, I do my best to hide it. I, I actually just tell people like, one of my biggest flaws is I hide my, I try to, I try to hide my sadness, my fears, and my anxieties. I do that a lot. I think it's my biggest flaw. I never really, like, I, I hide it. I always do. I'm the same, but I don't really know. I mean, it's definitely like not good for you, but no, I, it's not. It's for me, I don't, I don't see it as a flaw. I don't do it out of like, oh, I want to look strong. And no, it's not like that. It's just, I'm just very uncomfortable with, with those thoughts and feelings. So I just kind of just like, mm. I just sucked in. Yeah. For me, it was the opposite. I think for me was I saw it as my weakness. I saw it as I have a very different like a bringing in everyone else does, but I saw it as I'm not man enough. I'm not man enough, and that's why I have anxiety. Right. Have that's man, yeah. Right. I have that's... to man up. If if I show my if I show that I'm crying, if I show that I'm sad, not man enough. No, 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 no. And I used to just tell people like there were some times I think recently in the last year I used to tell people like there I had some horrible anxiety attacks. And some really, really bad ones. And I would just, if, if you were, if you were like around with a couple of like Arrow and a couple of other people, like if you were there when they happened, like they would tell me like, you just got to chill, dude. Like you just got to breathe, accept it, relax. So I totally understand how you feel about that when it comes to anxiety. And even then I just tell people, it's not something you get over. It's not something that like one day you wake up, you don't have it anymore. It's you just yeah, learn to live with it, accept it. And you find ways to fight around it. Right. And I don't want to I don't want to say it's impossible to get rid of or overcome. I do, however, think that it's yeah, it's definitely if you can't just snap out of it. A lot of people think like, hey, just, you know, just just relax, just religious. Just you have to learn how to deal with it and you have to understand what causes it, where it comes from right. um, and how to how to stop it. Yeah. How to stop it from happening. And when it does happen, understand how to deal with it, understand how to minimize the uh, the the pain, the because it literally hurts. It physically hurts like it when does, it when it happens. Yeah. Yeah, so just you have to so learn where you know what causes it, learn how to, to to prevent it, and when it does happen, you have enough experience and know how to deal with it, stuff like that. And I think that was like the road to you becoming SoCal's best player. You know, yeah, to where you I, are I think now. Getting, yeah. getting past the nerves and anxiety was definitely a huge step, and I it's insane to me because when Ultimate first came out, uh, I felt. I all of that nerves and anxiety came back because I was so uncon like I was not confident with my play at all because it was a new game. It was a new game. I'm not gonna be super good at the new game. Like all these new mechanics, I don't understand. For the first three months, like I I was I was I got ranked in SoCal like ninth. Like I was still like good, right? But I was nowhere near as good as I was at four when Ultimate first came out. Right. Uh, I I because because I, I did a bunch of new mechanics that I wasn't used to yet. Um, but surprisingly, after it was Genesis six that really that that was a huge turning point for me. Um, cause in smash four, I wanted to be the best. I wanted to, you know, uh, when I, uh, when I graduate high school, which, uh, uh, they didn't like 2018, I was like, when I graduate high school, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to like make smash my career and you know, all this stuff. But in smash four, by the end of the high school, I was pretty, I was damn good at the game. I was insanely good at smash four, but I didn't take it seriously enough for me to actually, uh, you know, do what I wanted to, to complete my goal. I never practiced enough. I never, I, I practiced, but I was, I didn't pay attention. Like I didn't actually sit down and watch and study VODs as much as I should have. I didn't practice with serious intent as much as I should have. I played the game a lot. I played it in obscene amounts, but I didn't focus enough when I was playing it. I played, I, I didn't focus enough. I didn't focus enough. I didn't take it seriously enough. I winged, I basically winged it. I winged my entire Smash 4 career and I wasn't, I wasn't gonna make that mistake again for Ultimate. So but when Genesis 6 rolled around and I got 65th with Fox, when I still played Fox and Ultimate, um, and when, I saw light- When the world still played Fox. Yeah. I, uh, when I saw Light top eight, um, one of my one of my good friends, uh, and I saw Zachary in top eight. I saw all these incredible players in top eight, and they put on this spectacle of a show, just incredible gameplay that I watched from the crowd. And I was like, damn, I want to, you know, I want I want to be there. You know, I that's that's what I want to do. That's that's what I want to do. And I was like, okay, I have a full year. I, I said, I looked at Larry, 
and I was like, we're to, I, I was like, we're top eighting Genesis the next year, next year. And he's like, okay. <laughs> um, and, uh, and it wasn't like a cocky thing. It was like, a, okay, I have a full year. Like if I practice my balls off for a full year, like if I practice my ass off, if I try my like absolute hardest, go to a ton of tournaments, watch my VODs religiously, glue my eyeballs to the screen, if I take it super seriously, put 110% of my effort, there's no way I shouldn't be able to top eight. There's no way. Like, this isn't a luck. It's not about luck. When you lose, you 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 messed up. You did something wrong. Just look at what you did. You know, watch your match. This isn't like an impossible thing. There are people top eighting the tournament right in front of you. Why can't you do it? So for a full year from Genesis 6 to Genesis 7, I almost every day outside of the weekends and even on the weekends, I wake up. Uh, I took I took a, a semester of, of class, but then like it ended. I don't even remember. It was stupid. I, I'm such I'm terrible with time, but like it ended um, like around Big House, I think around it, Big it, House. It, 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 it was it was Big House. I remember because we we talked about it because you told me. And then I was like, I'm not going back to school. I'm not going back to school. I I don't want to. I don't want to go. I don't want to go to school. I don't. This isn't what I want to do. I want to I want to play Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and stream it and make content for it and compete in it. That's what I want to do. I don't care if I make minimum wage doing that. I don't care if I can barely. I don't I don't care if I if I'm living in a studio apartment and I barely have enough to make rent and put food on my plate. As long as I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. If, as long as I'm supporting myself by doing something that I love, then I don't care if I'm rich. I don't care if I barely have any money. I don't care if I'm living. I don't care. I don't care. I mm-hmm. This is what I want to do with my life. I'm not going to conform and go to school just to make money and do something I don't give a shit about. Just just to just to make money and, and, and get a nice house. And I don't care. I don't care about any of that. I want to – like I have one life, right? Like I'm not going to – I don't know. I don't get to redo this. I don't have a redo. There's no rewind button. I don't right. want, I want to do what I want to do, you know? Sorry, I'm getting like super. I, I'm really passionate about this in particular. I, I can school, see. I can see and all I, of that. Um, I like think it this translates is... to who you are as a character as well. I think when yeah. I think about when I think about people, people ask me like, who's one of the most passionate players in Soka? I mean, like, there's two. There's two that I can name. Well, technically three, but there's two I can name right off the back of my mind, and it's always going to be Canine and Charlie, right. two sides of the same coin. Right. They're both very passionate, and I tell people it translates to who they are in the game how they play but not also who they are as a person yeah i think i think you guys have always been passionate yeah and i really want to get to um people a lot of people look at that and say you're you're an idiot like that's that's extremely reckless like just like you're not even what are you like ninth in socal at the time like what are you even like you're not you're not super you're not that great like you're not even on the world ranking you're not you got 65th at genesis like what are you dropping at us or what do you I'm not, i didn't drop out i just like did stop taking class what are you putting your classes on hold to pursue video games where you're not even that great. What are you doing? My, my thought process is literally if I put like ev- like all of my effort into practicing and paying attention to the game and playing and streaming, if I, if I put, there's no way I won't get good. There is literally no way. If you absolutely try your ass off, there's no way it's not going to happen. If you focus, if you pay attention to what you're doing, if you're honest with yourself, you're honest about your gameplay, you're honest about what you're doing wrong. There is no way you're not going to improve. And that's how I took it. So every day I'd wake up, my, my days went like this. I'd wake up, but when I was in class, I, uh, on, on Tuesday, Thursday, I had classes, so I couldn't go to tournaments that day, but I, I, like, I took, it was two classes, and it, it started at four and ended at, like, like eight, so, like, it wasn't even that bad. <laughs> it, it, was, it, was, it was, like, no time at all. I didn't even feel like I was in school. Like, I was in school. I didn't even feel like I was in school. Um, but, but so th- those, those were dedicated class, but, like, other than that, I'd wake up, uh, play, watch VODs, go to a tournament, come home, go to sleep, wake up, watch the VODs from that tournament, play, go to the tournament, come home, go to sleep, wake up, watch the VODs from that tournament, watch other VODs, all like that. That was an, that was, I did that from, from Genesis six, all the way to Genesis seven, literally every day. And after big house, after big house, um, instead of going to tournaments, um, three times a week, I went to tournaments four times a week, sometimes, sometimes five times a week, four times a week. There was no, it was always four. I don't think I, I barely ever went five times a week, yeah. though there was one week where I went seven times a week, which is ridiculous. <laughs> There was <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, get this, get this. There was, there was a week where I went eight times a week. It was Monday. I had MSM. No, no, it was, it was, yeah, Monday I had MSM. MSM. It was MSM had WNF, uh, Esports Arena, uh, 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 Land Hero, and then on Saturday, no, 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 no. It was, it was Land Hero, but there was another tournament. Um, there was the game. There was a Game Crossing Invitational. That was me, Nintendo, like Pastor, like uh, uh, yeah, they, they, they hosted it. And they, they invited. I went to that. 
right? I where was it again? I need to like check the. I, think, I don't remember where it was, dude. It, it was a, far. Yeah, I, I remember hearing about it because I remember I spoke to a Nintendo. Yeah. The Monday afterwards, and I was like, "Hey, I heard you did really good." And he was like, "Yeah, but I lost the Charlie." And he was like, "I don't know." Charlie he, he took a set. He took a set off me. He did really well. Yeah. Um. But uh. So that tournament, it, dude. I'm awful with like places and directions. I drove there. I drove there and back, and I don't remember where it was. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the place. Like, I, I, I don't remember the area. Long, it was all I know is it was far as fuck. It was far. <laughs> it was far. Like I. <laughs> I drove a hundred miles that day easily because I drove all the way there. It ended at four, and I was like, "Land Hero starts at 7 I'm gonna go. <laughs> so I I went all the way there, went stopped at my place, got gas, and then went all the way to Land Hero. It was like from that like from the from that place to Land Hero was like two hours. It was it was like two it was like an hour, an hour to that place, and then like two hours to Land Hero. Like it was. And then I won. No, no, I, I did. I did. I win that tournament. I don't remember. I, I, I don't. I don't remember. I think you did because I remember talking to Arkistor, and I remember it was after you came out of that, and Shine fought you. I think Shine fought you. Either Shine or Syra. It was one of the two. The usual winners of Land Hero. It was one of the two, and I remember Arkistor telling me like Charlie was a madman that day because he told me Charlie went to a tournament, and then he drove apparently for an hour. He came, he beat Shine. <laughs> Shine wasn't even upset. Shine was just over the fact of like, oh yeah, Charlie went to another tournament before. Two tournaments, tournaments in one day. Yeah, two tournaments in one day. Got and then there was Smash at Church, and then it was yeah. Smash. Yes, it was Smash Church the next day. And then I won that tournament over uh, Larry. A bunch of people. Everyone went to that tournament. Everybody went to that tournament. I got first. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah so I, I won that tournament and then genesis 7 rolled around um and that was okay i was like okay i've been i've been working my ass this was like my goal tournament this was it this was like the tournament i was like okay this is where i like it or not i've seen him imp- my gameplay has improved insanely I, wish- I know that i know i've gotten better i wish we could have made a documentary because like, that that's that's like a, that's like documentary material right there like watching my, uh, that, that journey like my okay, so I was like my gameplay has gotten a lot better i've dropped i i switched mains like like forever ago like i switched mains in march march 2019 i was like fox you're i'm done with you get get out of here i'm sick of your shit uh so i played i played i was wolf um and i quickly became i don't want i'm not the best wolf not not the best not even i don't even think i'm like tweaks better than me zachary's better than me arguably arguably ouch and jackal and larry are better than me arguably like it there's an argument to be made for it um but uh and even my wolf and even then, I'll still say this, and not as your friend, as somebody who is, who's seen you, who's seen their gameplay, and I'm not saying they're not bad. They're all great. They're all great. I really, I, I really do think they're good. Heck, you, I, even, even, uh, who, who did I meet like maybe a year ago? Stock Taker? Yeah, Stock Taker was like, oh yeah, I'm really interested to see how Charlie plays. He almost beat me at Nightmare on Smashville. Yeah, that was the one thing he was <laughs> telling me about that. Because he came over, I remember he came with Sid, and we were talking, and I got to meet him that day, and it was a re- super cool guy, by the way. And I asked him, like, who are you interested in, in, in playing against? He's like, Charlie. I really want to see how Charlie is. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm like, a, he's a really cool guy. I hope you guys play. And then I saw that, and I was like, Jesus. But yeah, we played in bracket. As your friend, as some, and not only as your friend, but as somebody who's seen you, I've always told people, even if Charlie doesn't say or the results or any of that doesn't show, it's Charlie's dedication, playstyle, and fear, ferocity that make me want to say Charlie is a top three fox without contention. Because Wolf. Oh, sorry, Wolf. We, we wish it could be fox, right? But Wolf, right? Uh, I Charlie is a top three wolf, no, no questions asked. Why? Because he's done the things that other wolves have not. Have I, I done. okay. I definitely think uh, what I was gonna get to is my wolf is just like I just do like you 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 won't see anyone play wolf like me. Like it's no, just like no. I just do like some ridiculous like I'm very not only do I do the shine combos the flash combos I don't just do them I do them consistently like I mm-hmm. they're baked into my play you see them all the time it's not like a special clip when i get them because i do them like they're part of my play it's a huge deal like you'll see me do short hop shine grab like uh, i'll do the you know it's, it's regular his regular shine stuff is just it's pretty basic now but i'll, I'll also like I'll, I'll anti-air with shine and do like a bear um i think i'm definitely the most consistent when it comes to comboing off flash um much to like my it, it's good and bad as you saw in genesis 7 because sometimes you miss <laughs> uh but yeah I, definitely i think 
I think I'm the most technical with the character for sure, but I don't want to be, I also don't want to be the most technical and not the best with him because that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> when you're, when you're like the most technical, most knowledgeable with a character, but you're not the best with them, that's humiliating because how much better do, do the other people have to be if they're not doing all the technical stuff, but they're still better than you. <laughs> like <laughs> that means that like how much better is your yeah. neutral than me? Like, I, I'm tired of that. You know, I, I've, I'm working to like, you know, when 2020 started, um, and even in 2019, like, or like late 2019, I started doing well at like, you know, tournaments that mattered. Um, not like super well, but like I started doing like, you know, I started like placing, I started placing, you know, I was like there, you, like, I existed. I didn't just like evaporate like I did at G6. At G6, I walked into the crowd and I, I evaporated. I turned into like, like, I turned into dust. That's what happens when you get 65th, 49th, 33rd, 25th at a major. You turn into dust. <laughs> 25th, maybe. I guess some people are pretty content with 25th. I'm not. I'm not content with, honestly, I'm not content with anything. I, I get really upset when I lose, regardless. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, I get to, so we get to Genesis 7, and I'm like, okay, this is it. This is where everything's culminated. And I was, I was so scared for that tournament because the weeks prior, I was blowing up SoCal. I was oh, winning geez. literally every local. Not only was I winning the locals, I was like doing some ridiculous combos and clips that I was posting, and then people were like, people were freaking out over like the combos that I was doing. And then in Smash a Church, I won Smash a Church over Larry, and I was that was a big deal. Um, and I was consistently beating Larry, I was consistently beating Nico. They were taking sets off me too. It was like back and forth. Me and Larry had like an even set count at the end of the turn, or maybe maybe I was up one, and maybe I was up one on maybe I was up one on Nico, maybe up one or two. I don't I don't really yeah. remember, but they were taking sets too. Um, it was it was a vicious season. Um, but. I, yeah, people, everyone was hyping me up for Genesis. Like, I, I walked by, dude, it sucks how many people's names I have to say that I, that, like, that, that are, like, redacted now, but I, you know, like, <laughs> you know, I, I walked by D1 and Kitaro, they're like, oh, you're gonna do so well this tournament, you're gonna do great. I walked by, uh, I walked by Light, he's like, dude, you've been, you've been playing crazy, you've been playing crazy, I got my money on this tournament, and then I heard on Nairo's stream, he said that I was, like, he, that he, I was a wild card, he thought I was gonna do well, um, and, and I was, and I was, that was, that was so ridiculous to me. I was like, there's so much pressure. Like, I didn't want to, I didn't put pressure on myself in the sense that, oh, I have to perform. I have to do well. I put pressure on myself. I, like, I don't want to disappoint these people. Like, they're like, they think I'm all good and they, they see all these combos. But then what if I just like get shit? Like, what if I just get owned? What if I get 65th again? Like, cause that just happens. Yeah, yeah, you could be does. infinitely better than, cause this happened to me. I, I was way better at genesis four or five was it was four or five i got like 65th or 49th or 65th and 49th 33rd they're all the same in my head i don't know like i got shambled at genesis three and i wasn't that good at that tournament and i got shambled at genesis five and i was really good at that tournament like like yeah. it doesn't sometimes you could be infinitely better than you were the year before but you still get shambled like it just you you play bad or you just get outplayed in the moment sometimes you just get like you can be amazing you just like the guy just like happens to like just like galaxy brain you in the moment you're like damn <laughs> i just lost and it's it's best of three and the atmosphere is like hella pressure like playing at a major in losers is the worst because <laughs> You're like all bunched up. You're all bunched up, and like, there's a bunch of people behind you watching. You're playing a super good player after super good player after super good player. Like mm -hmm. you play like what was my bracket at Genesis? It was ridiculous. Like I lost to Esam right away. I lost to Esam in top 64 in winners, and then it was like uh, it yeah, was MVD, it was scat, scat Dapo, elegant. Like I was like Jesus. Like that's that's at locals. Like that's okay, but like at majors. I'm nervous the second I run into even a mild threat. Like, I had to play Snaggletooth, who's, he's, he's like, he's ranked in Senkal, and he's, he's solid with Lucas. He doesn't have any, like, big notable results, but I know he's good. I've played him before. I know he's good. So he's a bit of a threat. So I run into him, and I'm, I'm already shaking. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I played Snoop before, the Vegas Yoshi. He's ranked in, Ve he's ranked in Vegas. He's super good. I almost lost to him, mm -hmm. um, and then I played him, played Snaggletooth. I played Esam. I lost to Esam, um, and then I... After that, it's a good player, good player, good player, good player. And honestly, I'm not used to that because my entire Smash 4 career, what would happen is there was a couple tournaments where I actually beat good people right. and uh, and made PGR, and that was, like, cool. But, like, I also don't care. Like, I don't care about just being on the PGR. I want to be, like, one of the best, right? I want to top mm -hmm. eight consistently. I don't want to just, like, get 25th, get 17th, get 9th, get 9th. Oh, 35th on PGR. Congrats. No, fuck that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, I, want, I want way more than that. Like, that's not something I want to aim for. I don't want to aim to be PGR. I want to aim for like, just, I want to be, a, I want to be one of the best players. Um, mm. But yeah, but in Smash 4, a lot of the time I lost to the first threat I'd run into at a major. And then I beat him at a local the next day. It was awful. It was, it was like an awful cycle. And it happened over and over and over again for like four years. So Genesis, I, I run into Snoop. I'm like, okay, 
threat, but I should win. Like, okay, I got it. Snaggletooth, okay, threat, but I should win. I got it. Esam, threat, but I got this, and I lost. And then after that, it was Scat. I was like, oh, man, okay. He's super, he's ridiculously good. He beat he beat the dog. He beat the, he beat the shit out of me the last time we played. He beat my ass the last time we played. Right. And then I, I, and then I, I, in Ultimate, I developed a skill that I didn't have in Smash 4, where I tune out everything the second three two one go starts everything like tunes out of my head and i just focus on the gameplay i got i've gotten really good at that in ultimate i didn't get i wasn't that good at that in smash 4 but in ultimate for some reason um i think it's because you have to really pay attention to this game in smash 4 you had a lot more time to punish things you had like a lot more time to punish and deal with stuff but in this game you have to be unbelievably like on point to punish very basic things yeah so i guess like uh i i just I don't know. That might be the reason, but I also might have just grown up. Like I might have just matured a bit, so I, I don't think about all these shallow like thoughts that I don't need. I don't need to like because thinking about your placing and all this stuff in the middle of your match is so shallow. Right. And I don't like. And I'm not knocking people who do it because I'm like that. Every, it's a human thing. Like it's it's you're like oh, I want to place better. I want to win, right? But like uh, it 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 messes you up. Like it, it you lose focus. But versus Scat, I just like in general that whole tournament. Uh, like I just I tuned in. I I I I tuned out everything that was bad and I tuned into everything that was important, which was the gameplay in front of me. That's it. Like I forgot that I was Charlie. I forgot that I was at a tournament. All I saw was Wolf on the screen and Mega Man on on like on the other side of the screen. I was like, okay, how am I gonna how am I gonna kill Mega Man? That was it. That was that was all that went through my head. And I three would him. I was like, like <laughs> after the set, I get up and I'm like, like I, I snap into my. I was like, how, how the fuck I do that? <laughs> because he beat beat me really bad the last time we played. Um, I guess I just like, was like hella focused, and I got a lot better like too. Um, and uh, afterwards I played. I don't remember the exact bracket. It was like uh, I know you ran into Elegant. You had to run into MVD. MVD. Was I, like, I was really. I had a really like. I was really happy about the bracket after Scout. When they, when I heard I had to play Elegant, I had like I was smiling ear to ear because I've I have like I've played Elegant. I played Matt so many times to mm -hmm. the point where. When he beats me, he looks like when we beat each other, we look like we're psychic because me and Matt have played each other a ridiculous amount. Like, in, I think I feel like a lot of our skill was built off each other because in Smash Four he'd come over and we'd play for like six, seven hours. He'd sleep over, and we'd wake up, and we'd play for another six, seven hours, and we did that all the time. We played in bracket all the time. We traded sets mm -hmm. all the time. Um, so I just like like I was confident as hell because I I knew exactly how he plays. He knows exactly how I play too so we could go either way. Of course, it was an e it was an even as hell game the whole time. Um but I was happy I got to play him. I was unhappy that it was a Genesis. Like it was a big deal like it sucks that SoCal versus SoCal. We were the only two SoCal left, I think yeah. in that in that bracket. Um but I was also happy with the fact that okay, I can I can do like my nerves were a little bit calm because I was like okay, I can this is I can do this. I can do this. But I also I have this weird thing in my head where if something is like easier if it's at a big tournament, for me, it's harder because I'm like, this should be easy. Right. But if I choke and lose, then I'm stupid. So that gets in my head. But I didn't let that happen. Um, versus me, me and Elegant, he was up two stocks, like a full, he was up, he was two stocks. I was at one stock zero. He was at two stocks zero. So he was up a full stock, game five. And I won. I have no, I don't even remember what I did. Like, I, I kind of do, but like, I don't even, that's insane. Like, making that comeback against Luigi is kind of hard. <laughs> I think about that sometimes yeah, and I'm like, I mean, okay, if I, if I can do that, I can do anything. So yeah, the you know elegant it was it was elegant Dak Po Dak Po was also like I I was nervous as hell for him because I, I don't like fighting Diddy at all um yeah. but I I again regardless of how I feel regardless of how I feel about the game how unconfident I am when when the game starts regardless of my complaints with the game when the game starts all that is irrelevant all that matters is how I can deal with it and all that stuff so that's that's what happened and I, I ended up winning that set and MVD he was up too well on me um and I just like reversed PO somehow like I I, I uh, love that one because. There was a point in time where, like, yes, you you reversed three out him. He was up two uh and I, I remember I was commentating because I was an off yeah. off stream match, and I had to I had the pleasure of commentating that. I remember you on commentary, yeah. And then you looked at me, and you had this smile on your face, and I looked at and I, I, I remember that, and I looked at player four, and I told player four, Charlie just smiled at me, and this is because Charlie has downloaded MVD. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't say downloaded. It's like I. I knew what I had to do. Like yeah. it wasn't like a full because MVD is ridiculous. It was still hard as hell. Yeah, like it was, just, it was still difficult. But I knew what I like. I, I, I felt confident yeah, that I, uh, after game twelve, hold on. And I told player floor, mark my words, Charlie is winning this. And he goes, all right, all right. Goes, so we get to the <laughs> whole game, and then I'm watching you win. And I was like, I knew the minute you smiled at me, you were going to win that, and I was just amazed. 
<laughs> yeah, that was. I think the reverse three O that tournament was the biggest thing for me because uh, I usually I because I can reverse three O people like I've done it all the time. But at a big tournament in losers, I've literally never even been in that situation before. Like right. I've been playing for six years and I've sh I've I've cracked the bed so many times at majors to the point where that just felt feels like the norm to me. So like I, it's like it's it's not a rational thought to be like okay I lose all the time. So even now that I'm way better, I'm gonna lose anyway. Like it's it's like a it's like a fear. It's like a stupid. It's it's a bad thought that shouldn't even be there because I practiced totally my ass off totally for this understand. moment, right? Um, but I tuned it out uh, when the game started. I just focused on the gameplay and I pulled through. And then Genesis Seven is one of the most hard. I'm not. I'm talking about this like it's like a big triumph. Genesis Seven is one of the most heartbreaking, lowest points for me because I swore to myself that if I practiced my balls off for a full year, I'd top eight the turn. Like I'd be able to do it, right? Mm -hmm. And I go up versus Meister. Suddenly, I blink. I, I, I tell myself that Genesis is like, I'm going to top eight this tournament. I blink, and I'm a set away from top eighting Genesis 7. I like from that moment. A, I blink, and a full year goes by, and I'm a set away from top eighting. I blink again, and I'm a game. I'm one game from top eighting. Yeah. I blink again, and I'm a stock from top eighting. And I do probably the stupidest play ever in my entire career. Meister is at 120 on his last stock when I'm up 2-1. I'm not talking about the Wolf Flash. I don't care about that. that was not the, right, who cares? Right, right. The Wolf Flash, I don't care about that. But that that was not a big deal. Um but Meister, I'm up 2-1. Meister's at 120 on his last stock. I'm at 80. And I'm like I'm going to drift in with an unspaced snare and hope it hits. You never ever ever want to do a play where part of it is I hope. You never want to yeah, hope. That is true. You never want to hope in Smash. Hope is trash. You don't want to hope. Yeah. You want something. If you're going to do something, it has to have a reason behind it. That Nair had no reason behind it other than if this hits, I can kill him. Because he was at the percent where Nair flash is true. So I was like, if this Nair hits, I win and I top eight. That was my thought process, right? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't, how am I going to hit this Nair? It was, I'm just going to Nair. Like, it wasn't like, how am I going to get this Nair? It was, I'm going to just mash it here and hope it hits and, and get it. Like, I'm going to just rush it. Like, you know, I was impatient. I was impatient. I was greedy. I was everything. And he up smashes me, and I die. I was pretty surprised that I died that early, but I, I didn't even like. I wasn't gonna complain about it. I wasn't gonna be like, I just died at eighty to up smash. What the hell? No, that was all my fault. That was I drifted in with a bad nair that I knew was bad. I knew it was bad. Like I knew it was bad in the moment, but I like the spectacle of like winning took over and was like, no, you can just win right now by doing this and hope it hits. And it didn't hit. And I got up smash and I died. Awful. Awful play. Don't do that. And never hope. Don't hope. Calculate. You want to calculate I everything. Love you I love that you're telling everybody this because that's not what sometimes some people see, right? Like when it comes to the average viewer, sometimes they don't see, oh, I died at 80. That was such BS, right? He yeah, no. Be yeah, people your, don't. Your thought process is no. Dying at 80 is normal in this game. It is, yes. He, he had rage. Like, yeah, and he, yeah. I know. The whole set, I was. Not do the whole set. I was playing around that. The whole set, I was doing like I was avoiding bad nears. The whole set, I was playing well in that area. I was like, I'm not gonna land on top of him. I'm not gonna be greedy. I'm not gonna be greedy. And then at kill percent, in the most important game of the set, all right, time to be greedy. Why? Why would I do that? <laughs> I never do that. No good player does that. Like, no, they everyone falls. Like everyone does. Obviously, like everyone has their weak moments and everyone messes mm -hmm. up, right? But that is like just the worst. Like, that is such a throw. And then game five, he just bodies me, like, after that. Yeah. <laughs> game five, I, like, just get owned. We I have all, nothing yeah. to say. Like, I just, and I'm just like, wow. What the hell, Charlie? What is your problem? <laughs> like, that's basically what I felt. We like, I'm not, broken. a lot of people will hear this and they'll be like, are you sure Meister didn't just outplay you? No, he did. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying he outplayed me. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, like, like, he outplayed me. That's what happened. Like, I'm not, I'm not like that. People like hear this and they think I'm making an excuse. I'm not making an excuse. I, I made a bad call and lost for it. Like, that's right. how is that an excuse? <laughs> that's, that's me admitting to being an all like to, to that's a I, like that, that's bad of me. That was bad on me. What, what the hell's wrong with me? And then he right, punished right, me for right. it. Like, yeah. So that was really heartbreaking. Just the fact that I didn't like, I, the fact that I came that close and didn't do it, like, it was after all that practice. And then, and then I was like, okay, you know what? Ninth, that sucks. That sucks so bad. Next tournament, I have another major. I'm gonna start traveling more. I'm a little bit more confident now. You know, I just actually beat a bunch of good players, mm -hmm. like a handful of good players, in losers, like at a big ass tournament that matters mm -hmm. in my like to me that matters to me. 
And I was like, okay, that's like the first, well, that's like the fourth time I've done that in my career. In my six years of playing, that's like the fourth time. That's that's awful. <laughs> but I was like, okay, you know what? I, I that was, okay, I, a bit of a confidence boost, confidence boost. Go to Frostbite. I don't do that well. I don't do well. I don't do well. I, I, I did like, I, I beat Scat again. Um, I I played a decent set with Samsor. I played a decent set with Kamami. They both beat me. Um, but it was, you know, it was like, okay, that was, it didn't hit my confidence that I was like, okay, I got this next tournament, next tournament. There was no next tournament. <laughs> COVID happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And in the wake of all of that, in the wake of Genesis, in the wake of, you know, the locals, I get number one in SoCal. That's probably the thing I'm most proud of. I was like, okay, that's, I've come, I, it, it made me take a step back mm -hmm. and it, it made me stop being so hard on myself. I look back, I was like, okay, I've, I started off and like, you know, it's been, it's been five, six years. I've made it this far and a year of practice, like a year of super serious grind, like harder than I ever practiced in four took me from someone who really, really hated ultimate, hated it, hated playing it, was really inconsistent at it was like, I was ranked ninth in SoCal, which is fine. But I, there was tournaments where I like, I top eight in SoCal Chronicles with Fox. Yeah. And the next tournament I, I went to, two. I went to, two. I went to, two. as like a, as like one of SoCal's best. I went to, two at a tournament and then there's another tournament where i went one two like i was doing bad at the beginning of ultimate like there was tournaments where i beat like high level players mm -hmm. and win and then there was tournaments where i'd literally lose round two and then lose round three of losers like th i that was how inconsistent i was at that game so i went from that to less than a year of grinding really less than a year less than a year of, like i went from that to number one in the region consistently winning locals consistently beating our top talent placing it like that was that to me was a huge confidence boost like that was just like okay my theory was correct about like if you put 110 percent of your effort if i like actually try really hard if i'm honest with myself about my gameplay i can actually get the results i want i can get the i can change my gameplay i can get as good as i want to be right now i'm nowhere near as good as i want to be but like the fact that i made that leap gives me confidence to make the next leap and then the next leap and the next leap um I just wish I had tournaments to do that at. Uh, this I don't know how this 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 quarantine is going to affect that because I was really confident, but now like I don't know anymore because <laughs> it's been so long since I've competed. I, I feel like I haven't gotten good practice either because the yeah. online is so. When all you have is your online, video, your video online was the best video I've ever seen. I know, and I know a lot of people gave you flack for that, but I just tell everybody. I, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute, but go on, go on, go on. Yeah, the fact that like uh, that I can't really gauge how good I am, like how good I how good my gameplay is not because there isn't tournaments to like see my placings it's more of without offline i can't tell a lot of the time if was i too slow to punish that or was that just like the lag like i can't it's it's hard because ultimates lag the input delay in a game where you all where you have no time to punish things you have very little time to punish things and then the all the input delay on top of that it makes it not only hard to tell like tell if you're getting better it's like Am I even getting good practice? Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell because there's a lot of situations where I'm not reacting anymore. I'm like picking like preemptive options. I'm not thinking about this. I'm not right, thinking right. about that. So I, I don't even know if I've been getting good practice. or I mean, I know I haven't gotten productive practice in months um, and it just feels bad. Yeah, like I at this point, I don't know how I'm, how I'm going to be when offline comes back. I'm scared. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely really scared about that. What, what I have to tell you and what I have to tell everybody because like, this is kind of, I, me who has been uh, been a moderator for MSM online as we've taken things online. Of course, if you guys are listening, thank you so much for being this far. But like honestly, um, having to transfer into doing online commentary, but also moderating and helping out to do my own part, I've told everybody the concept of a lag test in which you see fit, in which you see who has lag, does not exist. That is the thing Dude, that I've, I've had. It's to because tell so many even. People. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Can no, you no, keep no, going. Go, go for it. Go for it. I want to. I want to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Even with the best possible connection, it's still trash. Like, there's yes. too much delay. There's too much input delay. The input delay with the best possible connection is still awful because Ultimate is unreason. Like, I, I told you at the beginning of Ultimate, I hated the game. Yeah. Now I like the game, but I still don't. I still prefer Smash 4. I still love Smash 4 way more. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of problems with this game's mechanics. Um, Love the game. Love the game. Um, I love it, so I, I have problems with the mechanics because I'm so passionate about it. The game, it's already unreasonably hard to punish things. Certain very basic stuff that you see coming from a mile away. It's already unreasonably difficult to deal with it. But offline, 
it's pretty manageable. It's pretty manageable. If you're good enough, you can punish anything. You just mm. you just gotta be quick enough. But if you know it's coming, you know you got it. You know, but put add more input delay. A minimum of five frames of input delay, which is a lot. That's already insane. The game already has a native six, five to six frames. That's double. It has double the input delay online already. That's minimum. <laughs> if you now uh, try West Coast, East Coast connection, that's even more input delay. Yeah. So in a game where it's already unreasonably difficult to punish things, it is literally impossible to play your best consistently online. It's not going to happen. Yeah. That's why online is good for practice. Because if you miss input online, or if you miss a punish online because of the lag, you're like, okay, I had the right idea. I ha I'm planting the seeds in my head. I'm just missing the punishes. It's no big deal, though, because if I lose this game, I'm just practicing. I'm right, practicing. Right. I'm up. But if you're competing online, suddenly that misinput that missed punish because of the lag suddenly it actually matters if you miss that punish yeah because if you're practicing it doesn't matter you you got the right idea you have the idea in your head all you have to do is get the input down the input's the easiest part it's the easiest part as long as you have the idea down but in bracket it matters and if you're competing online it matters to you like it matters to you right so it's impossible to play your best online it's impossible to consistently play your best online it's not possible but you compete in that format, it's a recipe for disaster. It's absolutely a disaster. If you're going to put that much pressure on yourself and you can't even play your best, you can't play your best. There's too much input delay. Yeah. How are you? Sonic Snare has like seven. No, no. Cloud's back air has seven frames of lag. Offline, I can parry and grab that. Yeah. I can whiff punish that. Like, kind of. Like, if, I, if I'm if i perfect, I can whiff. Now, seven frames of lag, right? With five frames of input delay from online minimum they land and you react let's say you react let's say you see them coming down you see them coming down you're like okay they're about to land they land he has seven frames of lag five of those are input delay for five of those that attempted punish is already you've already you've already lost five frames to the input delay <laughs> <laughs> stupid and w which is crazy well, what i have to tell you and what i tell everybody right what you, what, what you do that is the concept like i said earlier the concept of a lag test does not truly exist because of those issues because of what you've just said so whenever people have come up to me i want a lag test i have to tell everybody legitimately what you're asking me to do i cannot do because that would involve me having to break out obs break out my switch break out my my, my wi-fi pray that my wi-fi is good first of all record video of you guys playing then make sure i go to obs editing software and count frame by frame by frame by each player and see the money if you press the a button on your controller Wait, if it matches can't they they just do speed tests. I know speed tests are pretty like you just look at their ping. No, 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 like, no, no, no. That's that's the problem. Is the speed test is a connection from your Wi-Fi to a server. The speed. Right. And that does not that does not meet the person in the middle because that's different. Your connection from the Wi-Fi to the server is different than your connection to pre peer Someone to peer. Else. Exactly. Right. That's that is true. Yes, that is. So huh. when people come up to me wow. and they tell me. As a moderator, oh, why don't you want to give me a speed test? It's like, a, no, I'm sorry, a lag test. It's like, I don't want to, it's not that I don't want to give you a lag test. Trust me, if there, if there was an efficient way of giving you a lag test, I would gladly do it, if, even if right, it took right. me 10 minutes. I wish, I wish Ultimate had it baked in. So many other fighting games have, oh, this person has three bars, four bars, five. Ultimate doesn't have, you can't, you can't tell. Ultimate doesn't tell you who's who has a better even, connection. It doesn't tell you anything. Even, Ultimate's even, online is so bad. It's bad in every way. The input delay sucks. The features suck. The arena suck. Elite sucks. Elite is ass. Why can't I change my character without leaving the guy I'm playing? Same for arenas. Why doesn't the arena tell me who has a three bar, four bar, five bar connection? Mm -hmm. Why can't I filter out the connections? What what what's wrong with Nintendo? What the hell is your problem? What, what's your problem? What was your problem? And I tell what's people your... when I tell people can't be that story. hard. It can't be that hard. <laughs> It can't be that hard. Sorry. Even some of the worst fighting games that have the noticeably have lag. Like for example, I've been playing Grand Blue. Grand Blue does not have like good rollback net code. Doesn't have. Dude, they put code. ultimate to shame. It puts ultimate to shame, yes, even though it sucks. Because like because the grand... even though you can see how many bars they have, but the one thing that it has is a frame counter. I know how many frames my opponent is lagging. If they're lagging by a frames, I'm like, this is unplayable. I'll take the L and hopefully I can climb back through the ranks later. That's the difference, but I, but I'm glad you speak to speak about it, and, and I kind of want to bring yeah. this full circle to to to, uh, to your infamous Twitter Twitter video where you, you oh right yeah, yeah yeah 
and that's what I tell people. Don't be mad at Charlie for saying this because in reality, we're I don't know. What's everyone, I don't know what the problem is. Like, yeah, we're, I, we're all thinking this. people act like I actually care about that. Like, like, dude. Okay, all right. What I was doing there, right? I was roasting a dude's terrible role habit, right? On elite, this guy wasn't. This wasn't just like some scrub, like dumb. Even though most people on elite are bad, <laughs> we just that's just like how. Like, I I don't want to. Because people don't stay bad. Like, it doesn't matter, right? Oh, really, I was, you know, really, really, making fun of the role really. habit. I was making fun of him rolling to one side of the stage and throwing shit, then rolling to the other side of the stage. Like, like that wasn't. I was like, okay, dude, you, come on, you're not gonna get better doing this. That's 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 what I was saying beforehand. And I, I started roasting his rolls, and then I just started saying like dumb, like stupid stuff that just came to my head. Do you think I actually like I wasn't personally insulting the dude? Like you're making someone. If I make fun of someone's gameplay, is is that offensive now? If I if I if I make fun of the way someone plays, that's 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 crossing a line. I don't know. I don't think so. And if I if I if I say some stupid like exaggerated hyperbolic stuff, like what, what do they say? Um, uh, get a job. I really wish I didn't say Smash isn't your calling because I don't mean that at all. I know that. I would no, never I mean, actually that. say that to someone. Like I that just like popped into my head like something to make fun of this Samus rolling around. Like I just thought it would be ridiculous. Like I yeah. thought that the absurdity of he's rolling around. And I'm punishing him for it. Throw away your switch, get a job, and quit yeah, Smash. Yeah. It's not your call. Like I thought that, like the the absurd jump, the leap, would be like an obvious that I'm exaggerating. I'm joking. Mm -hmm. You could say it's not funny. A lot of people found it funny. Oh, I found it funny. If you don't think it's funny, that's I, that's not my problem. Yeah. That doesn't mean I'm trying to like. You're, you're, what are you trying to do? You're, you're saying no. I was just joking. Like I'm saying I'm just joking. I don't mean it. Well, it wasn't funny. So what? I'm still joking. I don't. That doesn't just because it wasn't funny doesn't mean that I genuinely mean those things doesn't mean that i want that samus to quit i want that the guy to quit the game if you're bad quit the game if you're bad stop play. Fuck, 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 no no that's the, of course not yeah. of course not come on well, did that person ever contact you do you know if no, ever, no no okay. not at all not at all i don't even think he, i don't think he's ever gonna see it not at all and one of my one of my viewers as a joke went on quick play and put his name as cdk equals bully and i, I thought that was hilarious yeah. i thought one of my viewers, <laughs> like I, at first, like Best Nest saw it and thought that it was the Samus. And I thought it was, like, I ran into him, I started laughing my ass off. And then I, I checked his Switch account. I checked his Switch account, it was one of my viewers. <laughs> that troll. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's, I mean, that's what I tell people. Like, for those of you guys wondering the context is, you know, actually follow Charlie on Twitter. What, 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 tell, tell people your Twitter. Charlie Hardeno. H A R U N O. Yeah, um, so, I'm a nerd. I'm sorry. Follow Charlie on Twitter. I've always loved your tweets and your your videos. So I tell people, that's the funniest thing is we've all had that thought process before. Yeah, I mean, oh, like I'm just I, making fun I, of the way the dude plays. Yeah. I don't like. I don't have. I have no ill will towards the dude at all. Like yeah. at all. I don't mind. I've had that if, if you're bad at before. if you're bad at Smash, dude. Everyone was bad when they started. Yeah. Like. It, cares like yeah. who cares people were pissed i feel like it's just they weren't like, they weren't just like they don't know like the type of humor i try i definitely like i look back at that clip and i'm like i regret saying that that and that not because i hurt that i don't care about the feelings of the people i don't care i it's because it, okay saying this over and over wasn't actually wasn't that funny hold on um i definitely after watching it over and over think parts of it especially the uh the what, what do they say um Get a job. Smash isn't your calling. That yeah. part, that's not fun. That's 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 not. I'm not saying it's not funny because it's fucked up. It's not fucked up. Um, because I'm. I don't mean it. Um, I I just it just was ill placed. It was placed wrong. I don't know. I was just dude. I was just yelling stuff that well, came in my head. Like, it's like, I, can, I can tell you what I tell everybody. I've had that same thought process because I've go. I go to elite smash. I try to be good. I try to be better. I try to be my. I'll, I'll play my opponent. But my opponent is doing this thing. And I, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking the same thing. I'm like, dude, this is not your calling. You're legitimately brain dead playing me, going for the same thing. Well, I don't like actually think, like, I don't actually think this isn't your calling. Stop playing. Yeah, I'm yeah, thinking, yeah. why are you, like, I, why I, are you doing this? Why, I see what they're, I see the way they're playing, and they're probably not doing it on purpose because, like, they probably don't know any better. Like, this game doesn't steer you in the best direction when you're new mm -hmm. um, because of the mechanics. Uh, so you kind of it kind of encourages you to play, like, but then you run into someone who knows what they're doing and they just dismantle you completely. And that's kind of what I do. I do that verbally while I do it in game. Um, like I, I just like roast, like I just like make fun of the way someone plays. Like I'm like, why? What? What are you? Play? Like I'm not. I'm make. I'm not making fun of them for being bad because the guy wasn't like that. But it's not like he was clueless. Like the guy yeah. knew what he why he was doing what he was doing. He was doing it for a reason. And I was like, that's not gonna work. Like that's not gonna work here. That's that was the that was the roast. Like this isn't. This, these roles are bad. I'm going to punish you for these. <laughs>
but yeah, I, I thought that was. I still thought it was a really good video. I I had my my fun time because I've we've, we like I said, broken record at this point. I have thought that same thought process. Like, dude, stop rolling. You don't need to do that. Like, I, I've had that as a commentator. I've even said that. It, on it's like I'm like, come on, dog. Come on, dog. Like, it gets ridiculous. <laughs> it gets ridiculous. Like, play like that all you want. You have the right to. I'm. All, I also have the right to make fun of your play style. Like it's not a big deal. It's not like I'm like personally insulting you or anything. Like not even close. No, yeah. not even close. So, we. I think we had a. We had a. And if, I'll give you advice too. I give people advice all the time. Like oh, it's yeah. not like I'm like I'm not like trying to be like mean. Like dude. Like I'll be I mean if it's like an anonymous you. person that I don't know at all. Like I'll like be mean like to, to like as like a joke, right? Like for the viewers. But it's not like I actually like have any like animosity towards the guy that i'm playing not even close no, no not no, at no, all definitely I, I can i can agree with you i've i've told people charlie is one of the well <laughs> eon has said the funny things about that but i remember one time we'll, we'll talk about it in the post show but um my personal favorite thing i told people is that charlie is very approachable super genuine super nice guy super approachable <laughs> I think Thank one time, you. one time, Gerald told me like I don't know how to play Wolf. I'm having a hard time. What's your advice to me? I was like, I told Gerald like, dude, I'm, I, you're my friend, you're my homie, but you're asking the wrong guy. Ask Charlie. I love Gerald. I, 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 I told, I told Gerald, ask Charlie. He'd be more than happy to, to to tell you advice. And Gerald told me like Charlie gave me advice. I won my game and I played better. And I was like, see, Charlie will help you. He he knows what to do. So I told people Charlie's a great guy. He's super genuine, super funny. I think there's never a dull moment. When you're in the room, I mean, we've we've traveled, bro. We've gone to Utah. We've gone to Oakland. I told people whenever Charlie's in the room, whenever he's in the corner, you're too nice to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny thing. I even there's never a dull moment when you're on the room. I mean, there's a Thank lot of you. things like I should not repeat what you said, but oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> you're the most hilarious person to me because I tell people like I have never not laughed <laughs> when you're around. You've made me smile. You've made me crack up. You've made me learn even about the game because I can ask you questions and you're you're. you're always go into your thought process i mean i'm going to tell you this not as a friend but as somebody who has seen your growth as a player i do believe that you are worthy of a tier one sponsor somebody like you know like larry and all these other players because i see the value of you not just as a player but the value of you as a person and as someone who has gone through this level of growth and you are very much the example of what i tell somebody is if you had stopped complaining about the game and start putting your heart and soul into it, look at Charlie as a great example. Because People, okay, so I'm going to stop you right there real quick. A there's, a difference, there's a difference between complaining about the game mm -hmm. genuinely, like out of, and being a scrub about it, and complaining just to get like your like to get your thoughts about yeah. what you don't like about them. But then when it, like, when it comes down to it, you can complain all you want, but when 3, 2, 1, go, and the match starts... It doesn't matter. A lot of people, their complaints carry into the match, and their complaints hold them back. Like, they're like, that's so stupid, that's so stupid. And instead of learning how to deal with it, they're just like, that's so stupid over and over again. <laughs> For me, I'll be like, that is really dumb, but I'll also, like, I'll figure out how to deal with it. I'll figure out how to deal with it right away on the spot. Like, I'm not, like, it doesn't matter how much you complain or how many problems you have with the game, because it doesn't matter when 3, 2, 1, go starts, you have to know how to, you, no matter how ridiculous it is, no matter how ridiculously broken what you're dealing with is in your head, like, like, no matter how good you think something, you have to know how to deal with it. You have to learn how to deal with it, regardless. Um, like, I'll, I, you'll obviously hear me say, the X character takes no skill. I say that all the time. It's like my catchphrase. But I don't mean a word. I don't mean a word of it. Like, it's, it's, it's supposed, like, whenever I do a ridiculous wolf combo on my stream, I'll be like, I'll like, like, the chat will pop off, I'll pop off, and I'll be like, oh, wolf takes no skill like that you know like it's not like i don't mean that you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. or i'll be something ridiculous like a or like a minus five like a super good down tilt mm -hmm. like a like a matchable down tilt on show that leads into all this moves and i'll be like instead of saying wow that is ridiculously broken or wow that is super good i'll just oh, it takes no skill like it's it's like a term but it doesn't like mean what it i don't know i don't know yeah, it doesn't people, mean people what it means you know it's language. it's supposed to be like a, like again it's like an absurd it's supposed to be the absurd leap that <laughs> Like it's so obvious that I'm kidding because like that's, because you know you know how it goes. Smash is hard. Like regardless whether you win or lose. I, I totally agree. I, I tell people I think, and and I'm still learning a little bit about this myself as time of this recording. You know maybe when you're watching and whoever is watching this in the future, I don't know, but at t at the time of this recording, I'm still trying to figure out my brand, my my brand of who I am my, as my commentary, as a person, as a as a player, as as a, like I said, as a commentator. Broken record at this point. But I tell people, the person who's done, and Arrow gave me a really good example of this. Arrow told me, people, and I, and I had to, t I, I kind of tweeted this out at Riddles. Um, it's hard. People come to, 
let me rephrase this. When people watch your streams, they watch for Charlie because they watch and enjoy Charlie's level of content, his personality. Charlie has branded himself as this person. Nobody, I mean, yes, you're a great wolf, but above that, you're also a, a great Lucina, a good Meta Knight. But people come to the stream to watch Charlie. They no longer they know that Wolf is there, but they want they enjoy you. And I think one of the hardest things that people and myself included have found hard to be is branding yourself. Your and I think that's why people enjoy you. People enjoy your brand of comedy, your brand of content. That I'll tell people I I enjoy it. Heck, I'm I'm a subscriber. I'm I, I watch your stream. I enjoy it. But a lot of people and I, and I tweeted this at Riddles, you know, it's hard because some people, only, and, and I've had this conversation with Nico as well, some people only come to you as, oh, Nico is a sick shulk. They don't yeah. know Nico is a sick player. And then that's when you reel them in, though. That's when you got to reel, like, they come for the wolf and they stay for you. And if exactly. they don't stay, it's fine, too. Like, you know, they're, like, exactly. they're going to, you know, not everyone's going to like you. Just kind of, like, you know, there's a lot of people, like, all of a sudden, after that Samus clip went fuck, went viral, um, they see that and they just judge the entirety of how I conduct myself, how I am personally, and how I my stream is. They see that, like, two, like that, that, that minute-long clip. And they're like, okay, this is Charlie's piece of shit. Like, that's, that's, that's their... That's their conclusion. I'm like, damn, <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> but it's you're not gonna like it's gonna happen. Like I, people are gonna judge off what they see. And I, I just gotta, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. You can't really do much to change your minds. I just gotta keep, you know, doing me and. Uh, uh, and, just, and you're doing great. You're doing my own right? thing. Doing yeah, my yeah. own thing. Can't really worry about what people like think about you. Really, like, because not everyone's gonna like you. It's just kind of how it goes. Um, I, I can I can holler. It was a joke till the end of time, and people are still gonna. It doesn't yeah. like it. Fine. I don't really. It's fine. <laughs> it's no big deal. <laughs> and and then um, yeah. And just to close out this, like I said, like you've branded yourself very well. People now come for Charlie is funny, dude. Charlie, Charlie just roasts these people. I mean, look at I. I'm probably. Yeah, I, but I'm, my stream isn't even like that. That yeah. like that roast rare. I don't like mm. make fun of the everyone I play. I'll no, like no, definitely. I'll, like I, I I break down play styles a lot on my stream. That's like the main thing. I break down play styles. I break down mechanics on my mm. lab. Uh, I play like, high level practice. Um, we watch VODs, uh, like that's not the, and I try to be funny the whole time, but it's, it's not all me like making fun of people, like, or making fun of the way, not make fun of the way people play. That's not all I do. That's really, it's like a rare thing that, that's, that happens when I like run into like a certain type of play and right. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is like a, and I don't do it every time either. You know, it's, it's always, it's always just like in the moment it just kind of happens, but yeah. it's not like the main part of my stream. People act like that's all I do on my stream. Not even close, not no, even close. I mean, like, I, thank, thank, thank you for educating me on that as well. You know, yeah. but, I, but like I said, somebody who's watched your streams, right, it's a part of it, right? Like, yeah, definitely. It, it, it's, it's just me trying to be funny, man. Like yeah. that's all it is. Like, I, I, all, I, all my, my, they make all my stream is informative gameplay and comedy that's that's informative like, gameplay personality mesh, I, guess. Really I, think they, I think they mesh really really well and it makes it entertaining because nobody just it, there's a point where like maybe um by the time of this recording i probably have had like a few people one of them was is and i told is like he's really good at demonstrating people of how to learn the game he is essentially taking you to school for free on smash and everybody has their own style some people really want that informative educated you know, video on how to play a character, and some people want a different style, and I think you fill into that perfect niche that some people really enjoy, and I think that's something that I've always liked. Not you're also super relatable. You're a big fan of Naruto, you know, as this, as your Twitter <laughs> handle, uh, you know, is, and I think that's kind of what makes you really enjoyable to watch, what makes a lot of other these people enjoyable to watch. Um, I kind of want to close out with my final question. Uh, I but I think uh, time of this recording, this may or may not be a season one or season two episode i i have a long list i'm gonna be saying this probably every show at this point but like i reached out to a lot of people and then i thought like you like you said your auditions right going back to how you said your auditions or you thought you were gonna get no for all of them you went to 100 editions it turns out 100 editions wanted you back and you're like literally all of them yeah i got a call back on all like i might have like not got a call back on one or two like ever like um and that's really surprising and that that was just like what the yeah like the network told me that I didn't like know anything about it. They just yeah. told me, oh, you probably you'll probably like barely ever get callbacks. Like that's just like they tell that because that's what they expect. And then I just like got all of them, like somehow. I was like, wow. That's what happened to me with this podcast. I reached out to I made a list, right? I said I want these fifteen people. I probably crossed out like three because I was like, eh, this doesn't work. You know, I, I like this, but if this podcast were different, this would work. So cross out three people. Reach out to twelve people. I said I probably will realistically get maybe like four to five people, you know, to come back and say yes. All of them said yes. 
And then now I'm just like, ah, oh, shoot. Now I, I have to schedule everything. I have to make sure how, where I fit this, the pilot episode, blah, blah, blah. So my, my, my final question to you, you know, just to close this all out, because this has been such a great show. I, I think... Definitely. I definitely enjoyed this a lot. Thank you for having me on, man. Yeah, no. And, and I, I miss you, by the way. We got we to gotta hang out with we gotta hang. I think some of our favorite, Definitely. Some of our best moments are either getting K-Barbecue. We went to the 6 to 6 Night Market last year with, with Gary. Oh, oh, dude, that's still my cover photo on Facebook, man. I <laughs> so miss great. that. It's so Oh, great. my God. I'm so glad we got to do that, that before the world game. ended. So, um, but to close this out, I think this is the question that I'm asking everybody, because this is where the state of smashes and I, and I think people want to hear that thought process um what what are your thoughts on the state of smash before the giant calamity that would say befall befell on, on everybody and all these things were coming to light shamefully so and regrettably so you know what was your thoughts on before that as that happened and where do you think we'll be when we come back to hopefully in next year you know so before we were definitely the community was like blissfully unaware of mm -hmm. all of that so uh what's interesting to me is um a lot of these allegations not even because we just know we know they happened at this point they're not allegations mm -hmm. um a lot of what happened uh people had known about kind of like the senpai puppe thing um that was like an urban legend going around but i that's all i thought like i thought it was just like a like a mm -hmm. like a bs rumor right like just like something someone made up like because it sounds really stupid and then it turned out to be true and it yeah. blew like i that's jesus man and then when it comes to uh you know the what happened with nairo um i had also heard about that uh like two something years ago but i didn't like i also thought that was a bs rumor like i i didn't because it spread around a little bit you know yeah. but i was like that's ridiculous you know that's ri that's ridiculous there's there's literally no way um yeah Way. yeah it's very unfortunate you know like the, the whole community as a whole was you know just blissfully unaware i i was i was like it's ridiculous you know i wrote it off like that's ridiculous i didn't i didn't believe it um uh because you know and of course and if i even if i did let's say i did believe it right let's say i like strongly believe these were true what if i said something i just sound like a lunatic <laughs> because yeah. they're, they're both gonna deny it right um and it was brought up the simpai puppy thing was brought up before and it was denied um, and then the uh, the the Nairo Zach thing was brought up by like some secret account or something, and it was also like denied. So when it, when they when they denied, it, I was also like, okay, there's then then there's no way they're true, like because I already thought there were rumors like BS because they sound ridiculous, right? It yeah. sounds like something it someone sounds, like, it sounds like something you'd read in a Reddit post as uh, you exactly know. like some some BS conspiracy theory mm -hmm. or like something something stupid someone made up, right? So and then when 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 they when they were posted about like a cut like a year back or like two years back or whatever. Um, and they were both dead. I was like, okay, yeah, okay, this is it. Buried, bu it's buried and done. These rumors are dead. Like they're obviously fake. They weren't fake. Um, unfortunately, I wish they were fake. I wish they were just some something someone made up. Yeah. Um, not not just because oh we ruined the legacy. Like you know these people are redacted now. Not just for the, the victims, man. Like what happened, you know, to, to poor puppy. Like dude, that's so like I can't even begin to fathom like how yeah. that. How do you carry that for that long? I, I can't even and then and then of course I'm, one thing about the whole i'm just glad that people came out like the people like because it takes a lot to come out you know like yeah. it takes a lot to come out and say like this is what happened like to come out with your story of abuse against someone who's super popular too like that's it must be horrifying because people might just call, you know call you like a liar and stuff um of course it's always bad to like i don't want to say don't all like don't immediately you can't pick a side right away either because yeah. you know you have to have evidence come out like, you can't just say oh this person did this to me and just believe them right away because you can't like unless there's like evidence straight up like hard evidence or like the not even like just evidence like evidence in general there has to be a basis because you can't pick a side right away if there's if it's just he said if it's he said she said picking a side right away it's it's reckless i think um um of course, you can choose to believe whoever you want to believe, like personally. But like coming out and advocating against so and so and so and so, you you you, without like any proof on either side, right. bad, right? But of course, in this case, there's proof up the like up the ass, like um, and people, you know, everyone, everyone who was guilty admitted also, like uh, Nairo, you know, admitted. Simpai, si her silence says a lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, like like I'm I'm with you on that. I think I took it as. I took it as, um, I, I, and I said it before, I took it as a moment of, not necessarily failure, but as a, as a, 
we could not hold this accountable because, like you said, right? It's somebody that's super popular, so it comes off as something you would read in the back of, you know, a Reddit post yeah, that somebody right. made up a conspiracy theory. But then like, it's just... scary. It's scary if someone, like, say you say you were wronged or abused by someone who's mm -hmm. extremely like popular, so, like, and you're and you're and you're like you're like a nobody in comparison. Pape isn't. Pape is like a, it's pretty popular too. He's a big deal, but um, like, say like like trying to shed light on something someone with a huge following or someone who's super popular and well liked by everyone did it it's scary to do it's scary to do that it definitely like i can imagine i can definitely imagine that being scary so that it's it takes a lot to just just put it out there you know yeah i and, and my heart went out to all of them i think it's because and i i told people it was really hard for me to not necessarily swallow but to just kind of dude i it was it was like a like the it felt like I was like hit by a truck when all when all that happened. I, I just I got off like the internet for like not like I like got off like all my accounts for like a, like a week or two like a, about a week because I, I just couldn't I couldn't like I was like I don't want to be a part of like for a while I was like I don't want to be a part of this anymore I don't want to I don't want to play Smash anymore I, I need to like figure something out like I for a while for a part of me wanted not even a part of me for a better part of a couple of days like three days four days better part of a week um after the the whole thing happened I was like okay I don't want to be part of this community anymore this is not like this is just this is just, like it hurt you know it just yeah. my stomach okay, felt I, like it was I, churning I it was you. gross i think for like maybe a few nights i had like a really rough time sleeping it just, just because like if you know me like i've been to several events i've helped out at several events i've been i've been part of staff i i have legitimately have either a had dinner with these people or b have been in a room and have had conversations or have yeah talked or yeah exactly met. And, and people I used to respect a lot, exactly. like, and the victims too, like these, like, dude, I can't even like imagine, like, it's like I, I can't get over Pepe, dude. Like, how yeah. do you carry that for that long? I I can't comprehend how he must have felt for that long, oh, dude. Like, it's and it's hard for me because I have, like I said, I've, I've had dinner with these people, I've had. I have had I've shared hotel rooms, locations, you name it, and it's just like I tell people, it's really hard. It feels like I'm also as guilty because I they could have come to me and I could have done something. But yeah, it's it's sickening, man. Yeah. It's sickening. And, 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 and people are clowning on the Smash community like this is some bad. I think it's good that all of these stories are coming. I'm like, I mean, of course, no, of course it's good. Of course it's good that all these stories are coming out. Like, yeah, uh, people are you know like they're like, oh, the Smash community is full of you know. No, man, we, we got them. I think we weeded them out pretty well with all this. Um, of course, we can never be sure. Like, um, we can never be too like too cautious when it comes to stuff like this. And I don't want to like get on my like high ho like I don't want to like start defending Smash all of a sudden. But I think this isn't just a problem. It's, I think this is a problem everywhere. in like everywhere. Like, yeah. there's a yeah. a bunch of like companies in in the gaming industry right now. You know, there's a bunch of executives that that are being harbored by the companies they work for, even though they're abusers and and like uh like like rapists and and all of that you know people who have done awful things are also like it's not just a it's a it's not a smash thing this is like a widespread issue it's a yeah. widespread social issue that i think is being taken care of right now um yeah and you, you just have to we gotta we gotta you know listen listen you gotta hear people out who come out who come out with this we gotta hear them out you know um don't be reckless though don't be reckless however but you know hear them out hear, hear everyone out uh everyone deserves a say uh but you know uh, holding people we gotta wait out the thing that, that was the biggest thing is that I tell people was like holding people accountable because yes like definitely said, some of these people were in high high levels of stature and people thought that they could not be held accountable you know because of their high position but it's the thing of like everybody's human if you treat somebody like if they're some sort of you know high, you know if you don't treat them if you think of somebody else other than human and you yeah. take them as above that, then you're not going to hold somebody at Exactly, home. exactly. And, and also the opposite too. Um, so Nairo, Senpai, every, all the, everyone who, who was uh, – Kitaro, everyone who got – Kitaro especially. Oh, my goodness. I for, I totally forgot about him. Um, but everyone who was in that – like everyone who's who's offended, who, who's offended, uh, like who's committed an offense, who's uh, abused – Hold them, yeah, of course, hold them accountable. They're never allowed back in our community. Some of them even, like, I recommend. So, see, the problem is I, I am, like, crazy. I, I, I hate our our legal system, but I, I would I uh, recommend pursuing, I'd recommend pursuing, not recommend, I, I would like to see them 
take legal accountability. Right. But at the same time, I hate, I hate, because right, if this happened to me, like if I was a victim in this case, I wouldn't take it to the law because I hate, <laughs> I hate all of that. Like all of that, but at the same time, I want these people because people, the, the argument is what if, well, what if they reoffend? You, you, it's, it's partly your responsibility to put them behind bars. Um, I don't think that, like, I don't like, at, like, but I think that's what people, that's an argument that I hear and it's yeah. valid. It's, it's a valid argument. Um, I don't necessarily agree, but it's, it's like a valid, because it reminds me of the, of the, of the, of the JK thing, you know, like when I was like 17, yeah. a couple years back, I, we never like technicals, technicals and turtle went to the cops about it, but I just went back to SoCal afterwards. Like they, they took care of it. Um, but I, I just, I just dipped. Um, partly because I was a stupid kid, partly because I was far from home and I just needed to go back home, but mostly because I don't, I don't feel comfortable with the legal system. I don't know. It's, it's, no, no, no. I, it's I, totally odd, I totally, I totally understand. It's just like a weird belief. I don't know. It's like, a, it's like an ideal in my head. It's no, just no, no. weird. I'm weird, dude. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> hey, nobody, there's no such thing as normal is what I tell people. Nobody <laughs> grows up in their world wanting to say, Hey mom, I want to be normal. Cause everybody ends up a little weird. Well, let's be honest. Um, so to wrap up is, I mean, I wish, like I, like I said earlier, guys, this is season one. Season two might be a little bit different. Hey, who knows? Charlie might come back for season two. We could probably do a little bit. I'm, I'm down season. to come back anytime. Man. Uh, but for, is there any questions you would like to answer? Maybe people have asked you in the past before that you've never answered. I, my personal question, I guess that I can ask you as part of the mass of people that may or may not ask you. Um, if you had a, if you have a choice to be sponsored by a tier one sponsor or an org of your choice, who would it be and why? So I've been thinking about this this specific topic a lot for the past mm. year, and I hope you it, do end up becoming. And I think no, you're, you're gonna be surprised by my answer. I think uh, my ultimate goal for Smash, I think, is to be independent. I don't think oh. I want to be sponsored by anybody. <laughs> okay. I don't. I th I think I want to. I think I want to build an audience that appreciates my content and I, and I, an audience that I like an audience that I, I enjoy making content for. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to be supported through, you know, the content I make and, and competing. And I think that's, I think it won't, I won't be like living like lavishly. I, I probably be, I probably still be like, I probably end up in an apartment or something, you know, yeah. um, if I'm lucky, cause SoCal is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's honestly, I couldn't ask for anything more. Like that's, that's the, what I want the most, honestly, my ideal life is to live in, in in a modest apartment or like small place um and just and and support myself through content creation um and competing like that's that's the main thing i don't think i'd want to be attached to some big name sponsor because i'd want to do my own thing um i feel like maybe 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 taking the sponsorship for a temporary period of time in that step to get there would be fine but i don't think i'd want like a like a long term like a cloud nine or like a like it's like a what you know what mango has what what mm. void has well, I, i'm not actually not too sure i don't know what Vo voids void's been with clg for a long time you know um yeah. i don't think I, I don't think i want that good for them that, that's incredible yeah. you know congrats to them that's insane but i think i think my goals are just a little bit different like, you know i, I think i'd rather no, I, I, I definitely agree. it's really unrealistic because smash is smash is huge but obviously huge, like sure. it's it's like con the con smash content is, is huge but it's also very oversaturated um that's the and... only thing i had the conversation with is on i'm sorry just to cut you off really quick it's cool, cool. but, but, but the, i told him no no shame no shame i his content is good it, it, people enjoy i love his last videos are genuinely good and, and i think no i'm, I'm is on in general but i'm not going to like for the record i don't want to say like hey i'm flaming this person or i don't think his content is good no i think his content is great he's done a really good job not a lot of smash content creators got the high up is alpha rat right you look at Alpha Rat, Alpha Rat's content, he's been able to reach a million subs because of his content. But when it comes to when you put Izos content as an educational content versus Alpha Rat's content, you can see what's more appealing to the general audience. The broad yeah, no, Alpha Rat definitely has the broad appeal for exactly. sure. Exactly. Dude, because most people just like I I definitely I don't know, like it, it's definitely a neat a more of a niche, like for for mm -hmm. uh Izos. Because Izos, um, they're a lot more like an, uh, like analytical um which are super good and they have their audience he gets a, a ton of viewers too but yeah. alfred definitely a bit much more of a broad appeal because he's just like you know he's just a funny guy he's, he's yeah. making funny videos making funny silly videos and that's all all you know all it takes silly goofy you know antics and that's yeah. that's has a very broad appeal you know no and i want to say that again good stuff. 
good for stuff. The, for the record, I'm not saying they're, you know, I'm not trying oh, yeah, to. No, not at all. No, good, I'm good, just giving good, you guys an example stuff. of how Smash content creation, how hard it yeah, can be. Because yeah. Charlie is, you know. But yeah, I, I think that's a really cool thing for you to say that. Because you said, I, I want to. It, I want to be a more self-sufficient person that is happy doing what they love and love what they're doing and they can still make ends meet. And yeah. I totally understand yeah, that. Exactly. I think, like it's just, just a, I just want to accomplish that, man. That's all yeah. I want. And, and I think that's what anybody wants. You know, sometimes happiness isn't a huge house. Sometimes happiness is breaking up and getting to do, doing what you want. Doing, doing your own thing. Exactly. Like, I, that's all I want. I think there's no... I think that's the best way to wrap up the show. Honestly, uh, there is there is no other way to wrap it up. I think that's a good way to wrap it up. Um, Charlie, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate that. Sorry about all the time I cut you off. No, 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 no. It's, it's great. It's your show, bro. I, I'm just providing the platform. <laughs> it's your show, and I'm happy that you can be coming a part of it, Charlie. Thank, hey, thank you. I really appreciate you hitting, up, hitting me up for this, man. And I miss you. I miss you a lot. I, I miss, I miss, do I miss us all hanging out? I miss, I miss, I miss seeing you at tournaments. And there's a lot of things that we can get into in the post show, but like, there's, I miss you coming up and just saying the things that you say and hearing it and just laughing for like 30 minutes straight because what you said it was so funny. But Charlie, if people want to keep up with you, where can they find you? Uh, you can follow my Twitter and my Twitch. That's pretty much all you need to follow. Um, I have other, like, I have a YouTube that I don't post on anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, if you don't want to follow me, I don't know, it's fine. <laughs> I don't really mind. <laughs> what, what, what's your what's your Twitch and Twitter for the people? Uh, so my 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 Twitter is Charlie Haruno. Um, I spelled it earlier: H A R U N O. Charlie H A R U N O. Mm -hmm. And then Charlie the Kid. And my Twitch is extremely. It's a long name because Twitch is dumb. It's long story. Why my name is long. Charlie the King Cereza C E R E Z A. Um, Charlie the King isn't available because I made an account with that name and deleted it, but like four years ago and it still isn't available for some reason um uh, uh but yeah that's that's what i got that's just all i got for you guys if you want to keep up with me um either way i appreciate you guys tuning in for this long it's actually kind of nuts that you're still here but yeah, thank I, you uh we yeah, appreciate no, that a lot no thank you guys for so much for coming in um of course my name has been vance you guys can follow me at vance underscore exe i tweet every now and then i don't know depending on what i feel like tweeting try to make more content like this but um i'm we, we're gonna do a small pre-show just covering if you guys want to keep up with that that'll be on some other level of content i i don't know if at the time of this recording i'll announce that or not i don't know uh but thank you guys so much for watching it has been my pleasure to serve you and be kind to each other Have yes please definitely